ESPN Speed World welcomes you live to Darlington, South Carolina for race number five of the 1996 NASCAR Winston Cup season, the Trans-South Financial 400. It's a tough old racetrack, and who knows better than that than two drivers who have competed on the surface, Ned Jarrett and Benny Parsons. And folks, they've been coming here since 1950. But in 1950, they were running 100 miles per hour just over, and now Ned, qualifying speed over 173 miles per hour. Benny, I still can't believe that they can go around this place at that speed. It's a very narrow racetrack, at least the racing groove is, and one of the problems drivers have here, you had it when you raced, and I had it when I raced, if a car gets in trouble in front of you, there's no escape route. And the cars are just simply going so fast, there is no place to go. And we saw evidence of that yesterday in the Bush Grand Night race. Watch as Chad Little gets tagged by Larry Pierce. He goes up, smacks the wall, and comes down. Those cars have no place to go except into the crash. But every once in a while, Ned, you can get lucky. Watch Phil Parsons. Comes off turn two, does a 360. Car's going inside and outside. Does another 360. Car still going by and you can get lucky once in a while. Yeah, that's very rare that you get lucky like Phil Parsons did here yesterday. There's plenty of evidence on the walls around this old racetrack that'll show that a lot of them were not lucky. For more on that, here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, guys, that wall says Darlington, but not as much as this one. Long black scrapes etched into the concrete where some unsuspecting driver got a refresher course in respect for NASCAR's oldest stock car facility. You know, when Harold Brasington plowed under the peanut farm back in 1950 to build this place, he envisioned drivers from all over the world would come here and make their mark. Well, they have. Right here, that's Chad Little. This one here, that's uh, Jeremy Mayfield. And uh, up here, that's Larry Pearson. You get the idea. You know, unlike other racetracks that paint their walls pearly white prior to an event, they leave these Darlington stripes here as part of the heritage, a heritage that can humble the most seasoned drivers and humiliate the rookies. In fact, this week's lesson in humility came early in the week during first round qualifying. For more, here's John Kernan. Some of the biggest names in NASCAR, Jerry, failed to hit the mark in qualifying on Friday when 23 front stretch pit stalls were up for grabs. We're talking big names, former winners here, like Ricky Rudd, Dale Earnhardt, Daryl Waltrip, and even the defending champion of this race, Sterling Marlin. They are all pitted here on the back stretch where 17 wins, that's what is accounted for among these drivers, 17 victories right here at Darlington, that's more than over on the front stretch. While the veterans had some problems in qualifying on Friday, some of the young guns had some pretty good luck, including the pole winner, but Bill Weber, he found out that after you conquered this track, it'll reach out and bite you. John, like a lot of us, Ford Burton has to work on the weekends, and Saturday afternoon, he got trapped in some rush hour traffic and bet up his NBA Pontiac, but like a lot of guys, he could have taken out his charge card, gone and rented a car, and driven down the road here to Myrtle Beach. But he didn't do that. He limped it back to the office, got some of his buddies to work on it, and this is the pole-sitting car that Ward put up here at a speed at nearly 174 miles an hour. Right now, Ward Burton is sitting in his office behind his keyboard, ready to go to work on the real superhighway. Ward, you haven't had a chance to run this car since yesterday afternoon. Tell us how you approach the first few laps here. Well, everything showed back uh, pretty good like we had it on the scales. Uh, really don't think it was anything but cosmetic. I hate it for the guy from the NBA and 18 pulled me through, and uh, they did a great job of getting the car back. They changed the entire rear end virtually and the right front suspension. The last time a Pontiac won here, 1963. Ford Burton was pretty young then, but he liked to pick up his second one and make some new history here today. Further down pit road, Dr. Jerry Punch. Ago, when the cars were ready to roll in Atlanta, surprisingly, this car was not in the field. Jeff Burton and the Roush Racing x team did not qualify. After two top fives in the first three events, they were second in the points, but somehow they just didn't make the field in Atlanta. Buddy Parrott would not let him get down. He brought the same car and same engine, same driver here to test at Darlington, shattered a track record. Now, they qualified 21st, but don't let qualifying fool you. Yesterday afternoon, in the final practice session, they were among the four fastest cars in practice. They are going to be a bullet. In fact, I asked Jeff Burton, how do you feel today? He said, I'm excited. Bob? Jerry, thank you very much. He's excited. We're all excited to be here again for another race on this facility that you can almost feel the tradition when you come up here that's been built up for the last 45 years. Well, let's take a look at the point standings as we enter this event. Dale Jarrett has a 50-point lead over Earnhardt with Rudd, Elliott, and Craven completing the top five. 
Hendrick teammates Schrader and Labonte and Roush teammates Musgrave and Martin join Bobby Hamilton in the second five. Now, how about Bill Elliott? He's fourth in the points. That's 14 better than he was in the point standings at this time last year. Darlington has been one of the best tracks for Bill. Remarkably, he's completed 99 of the laps since his... 7.45 this morning, about an hour and 15 minutes ago. Take a look. They fired the engine up in the garage area, and suddenly the car began to overheat. Immediately, it was 230 degrees. They had to pull the old engine out, put a new engine in, and incredibly, they just got the car here hey, on the grid. from Joe Myers Ford with the four most exciting words in Winston Cup racing. Gentlemen, start your engines. genuine Chevrolet by Napa Auto Parts. We keep America running. McDonald's on the track and in our restaurants. Just watch us cook. And by the NASCAR story to order call 871 NASCAR. And the pace car begins to pull away with the 41 starters behind it. They're going for a total purse here at Darlington this afternoon of a little over $1.3 million. That includes $114,000 in Unical bonus money and $30,000 for the NASCAR Winston Cup leader bonus. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. For the second consecutive race, we have a Pontiac starting on the pole. It's Ward Burton's. In the MBNA America Pontiac, 173.797, a new track record. In fact, the top 20 qualifiers broke the previous track record. Jeff Morton starts alongside in row number one. Second row, the points leader Dale Jarrett and Morgan Shepard, who struggled somewhat this year, hoping for a good finish here today. Then Bill Elliott, the man we talked about just a few moments ago, starting in fifth position alongside Ken Schrader in car number 25. The fourth row, the Wallaces, Kenny in car number 81, and brother Rusty in car number two. Uh, starting in ninth and tenth positions, Jeremy Mayfield from Owensboro, Kentucky in 98, and Elton Sawyer from Chesapeake, Virginia, car 27. Row six, Rick Mast and Jimmy Spencer. Spencer continues his fine running in 1996. Bobby Labonte, Ricky Craven back in row seven. Row eight, Brett Bodine and Mark Martin. In row nine, Terry Labonte, one of the fastest cars in practice yesterday, and Ted Musgrave. And in row 10, Jeff Bonine and Derek Cope. Row 11, we see Jeff Burton and Dick Trickle. Have one more lap to go before we get the green. Row 12, Bobby Hamilton in the Richard Petty car and Ricky Rudd. Row number 13. And everybody past Rudd and Ned starts, or rather a pits in the back stretch. That's right. Lake Speed and Bobby Hillen making up row 13. Some great drivers all the way back to through the line. You see Earnhardt starting in the 14th row. We talk about it a lot of times about how many good drivers we have starting near the back of the pack. As you see these folks coming flashing up there, I can honestly say, Benny, I've never seen that many top drivers starting as far back as we seen here. I haven't either. And ironically, we saw the Waltrips back in their row. They ran exactly the same speed as Daryl and Michael. And they're in row 18, Dolan back and ready. Johnny Benson Union, Jr. and Dave Marcus. And then Kyle Petty, Joe Nemechek, and the 41st starter this afternoon is Mike Wallace. 293 laps in this race. It is a 400-miler, unlike the uh, fall race, which, of course, is the Mountain Dew Southern 500. Failing to qualify for this event, Chuck Bound, Randy McDonald, and Robbie Thacker. Those three cars had to go home, unable to qualify. 41 in the starting lineup, and the pace car is off the racetrack. And we are set to go as we show you some of our in-car and on-board cameras that will be 
helping cover the race here today, and the crowd is unbelievable. Sold out house at Darlington, set to watch 400 miles of racing, and the green flag is out. Here we go. that Ward Burton has led in 1996. And he is getting some heavy, heavy pressure from Jeff Gordon. And the cars are getting strung out, trying to get... And a car is blowing down the back stretch, Dick Crickle. Dick Crickle and the health source car. Oh, the back spins. Up against the wall in turn number three. Everybody goes to the bottom to avoid him. The car stays up on top of the racetrack, thankfully. And there'll be no other car involved in this incident. Dick Trickle, it was obvious that something was going wrong as he went down the back stretch. And then when he got to three, the car broke loose. And we can see the left front tire is flat on the automobile. Boy, oh boy, the second lap of the race. And he's very fortunate, as many cars as were behind him, that no one got into it. But I'm sure the spotters had told him, that, hey, guys, there's a car smoking up ahead of you. There we see, down the back stretch, the car starts to smoke. There he is, heavier and heavier, and all of a sudden, when he starts out in the third corner, the oil will get under the wheels of the race car, and he will lose control and back it in the fence. And he said, please, don't hit too hard. Please, please. Oh, that's it. That's nice and soft. Not a hard hit at all, but uh, enough to damage the car and send Dick Trickle to the pit area. And we'll be back with more from Darlington right after this. Caution came out on the second lap as Dick Trickle went down the back stretch, appeared to uh, lose an engine or something that put some liquid down on the tires, and it caused him to spin in turn three. Got all right where the car was at. See all of that smoke coming okay, from his car as it goes into the turn. Down. Apparently some oil gets on the rear wheels, loses control, and right into the wall. monitoring uh, NASCAR control throughout the uh, afternoon. Mm. That was a more severe oh, hit than we go thought. back round or uh, go back to hope. Go counter course, uh, Johnny, and your last car is the 37. You got anything on a bad pit road 42? That's a NASCAR official. Uh, David, give him some help for the spotter for that 16 car. Get him back right behind the six. Close the 16 car up, gentlemen. That's David Hoots doing the talking. Darrell Walter, I saw him going by just a moment ago. I, I looked on the left rear, and I thought I saw some damage on him. John Kernan, does Darrell Walter have damage to his car? It doesn't appear to be serious damage, but he and John Andretti did get together when Trickle blew the motor down there going into turn three. Andretti has been on pit road. They have changed tires and also pulled the fender, the right front fender, away from the tire to keep it from rubbing. Also, Johnny Benson dropped on pit road. They made a chassis adjustment, took a round to buy it out of it, and also topped off with fuel. So not only Dick Trickle damage, but also the 17 car of Daryl Waltrip showing some damage here in the early going in the Trans South Financial 400. Ward Burton is your leader. We'll be right back. We're back here at Darlington, and the field is getting set for the restart as the pace car is now off the track, and Ward Burton about to bring him down for the green. Doyle. Hey, how you like dropping the flag? <laughs> oh, you're the, 
We see Jeff Gordon is taking the lead, and Dale Jarrett gets by Ward Burton for the second spot. Ward Burton back to third, but now Morgan Shepard goes to the inside in turn number one and gets the position away from Ward. And now Bill Elliott will challenge along with Ken Schrader. themselves from the rest of the field. Jeff has a rather comfortable lead and John Dale Jarrett running second well ahead of Ward Burton. John Kernan has an update. Well, Bob Darrell Waltrip and John Andretti got together right there when Trickle lost the mothers. I told you Andretti, all they had to do is pull the fender off the right front. Darrell's got some damage on the left rear. We're not sure if that's what is causing the problem, but Darrell dropping way back now. The final spot of the car's left out on the track. He has radioed in and told his crew that this car is really, really bad and loose off of both turns. So Darrell Walter fighting a handful right now. You know, and that's surprising because the problem that all these drivers have been facing this weekend has been pushing off the corner. Well, evidently, Darrell has this fixed, but he's had it too well fixed. Group of cars in close competition here include Michael Waltrip, Robert Presley, Sterling Marlin, and Ernie Urban. Marlin to the inside, trying to pick up the spot on Presley and does. That's back about 26, 27 spot. Steve Grissom there, the yellow 29. And look at all those cars, bumper to bumper. Marlin going to the inside of Michael Waltrip.
Cam on Michael Waltrip, Sitko Ford, looking up ahead to Elton Sawyer. Now look at him back three abreast of John Andretti. Takes a look on the inside. That's Kyle Petty in the 42 car. Dave Marcus in 71. John Andretti in the purple car. Here's Bobby Hamilton and Dale Earnhardt racing for 20th position. Earnhardt trying to get to the inside of Bobby, but he slams the door in four. Remember, Earnhardt started in 26th position. Bobby Hamilton started 23rd. While we're watching all this action back there, Morgan Shepard has lost the key spots up front. Bill Elliott moved around him. And so did Kent Schrader. There's Morgan on the left of your screen in car 75, and Rusty Wallace right behind him. Now switching back to this Hamilton and Earnhardt tussle. This is turn four here at Darlington Raceway. They come off the corner. Summary. We'll show you where everybody's running at the moment. Earnhardt there in 21st position. Oh, and Ken Schrader spins down the backstretch. And he hasn't hit anything yet, and the caution flag is out. Just, and now another car is spinning the back. Sterling Marlin is around. All kind, oh, Bobby Hillen also involved. He's got some damage on that car down the backstretch. So at least three cars involved in an incident. Ken Schrader, Sterling Marlin, and Bobby Hillen. How is Hillen seeing where he's going? Oh, look at the damage to the left rear of Schrader's car. The report is that Schrader and Michael Walter have bumped, causing Schrader to spin around. We'll see what happened. Schrader just comes off the corner. Looks like yeah. he's got the car loose as he came off the second corner. And Kenny Wallace in car 81. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know if he touched him after he, he spun or not. I knew Michael Walter was far back in the field. He couldn't have been up there where Schrader was. And what's going to happen is Michael is going to make contact after Schrader gets going okay. again. Somehow, and I don't know exactly how this is going to take place, but there we see Sterling Marlin spinning. And all the cars are now coming on pit road for a scheduled pit stop. Pitco Road gets real busy here as everybody comes in. Here's Jerry Punch of Jeff Gordon's pit. And Jeff Gordon locks the brakes up and slides the car into his pit. They will change all four tires. He's pitting at the far end of pit road. That's a champion's prerogative. You get first choice of pits. Dale Jarrett also now has already had right tires on. Left side of the quality care board going up. Left side tires. And Gordon is down to the way. He's the first car off the jack. Jarrett now off the jack. And Ward Bird will actually beat Dale Jarrett at the end of pit road. A lot of traffic down here. Ken Schrader's in his pit. He shredded the left rear quarter panel. Heavy damage back there. They're going to make a four-tire change, try and get him out in front of the pace car, then bring him back out. They're going to try and cut off the rear quarter panel. Right now, Earnhardt on the back pitch. John Gurdon is there. Earnhardt gunning the engine to work. He's almost done. A little bit of pop with the left. That's on the left front. Earnhardt is down and away. So is Ricky Rudd and Joe Nemechek will win the race off of pit road here on the back stretch. Also, Earnhardt's car bends at the little tight. Pull the rubber out of the right front and also a chassis adjustment in the left rear to try and loosen that car up. Rudd, Earnhardt, and Irvin come out of the pits right together, staying on the bottom side of the racetrack, blending in with the traffic. Now let's take a look again at what happened over there in turn number two. First of all, Schrader spins to the left. Round he goes. Kind of like the Phil Parsons spin yesterday afternoon. Did not hit anything. Car still continue to zip by. We can see just how fast they're going by. And Michael Walters is in the pitch. John Kernan. Benny Michael just leaves to avoid getting lapped on pit road. A lot of damage on the right front. The nose pushed way out in front of that. Also, the fender, some of the fender torn away on Michael's car. Sterling Marlin was also in. I didn't see a lot of significant damage on Sterling's car, but we would expect probably Michael and maybe Sterling to come back here on pit road this next time around. But they couldn't get all the work done that time because the pace car was already headed down the backstretch, and they didn't want to get caught on pit road. We haven't seen exactly how he got the damage, but let's show you how that occurred. Okay, now Schrader gets his guard going. He's now continuing on. Oh, my wow. goodness. Michael comes along and hits him in the left rear. His car goes off the ground, so that's the result of the, the damage on the right front. Boy, Schrader had to be thinking, well, I got through with this. Man, thank you, Lord. And then all of a sudden, here comes Michael. Man, oh man. Michael Waltrip is back in again. And
Ken Schrader also comes in for another stop as they try to get some of that loose body work torn away. I don't know how they can put gas in the car. We see the gas filler just sit in there. The fuel, that's the vent hose, the plastic hose the fellow just picked up. They're going to do some serious wiring and taping to get all that stuff in place. Ken Schrader with a couple of top ten finishes this year with sixth and points going in. Here's Bill again. Oh, Bob, they got all the necessary surgical tools, snips, tie wraps, tape. They're going to try and cut away the uh, quarter panel that's back there, the sheet metal. Then they're going to try and tie wrap the fuel line up to the deck lid of the car around the spoiler and then tie wrap there. They're waiting with the gas to put it in. Schrader's going to have to take off in a second so he doesn't get beat by the pace car. They'd like not to lose a lap. They're still struggling with this. The front of the car looks fine, but Ken Schrader's going to have a long afternoon. Just a half hour ago, he told us how tough it was the race here. Then he went out and proved it. So the crew continues to work while Jeff Gordon is at the front of the field here after 23 of the 293 laps and wife Brooke is looking on. We'll take a break and be back with more at Darlington, South Carolina. About three quarters of a lap away from going green once again. Take a look again at what happened to Michael Waltrip just a few minutes ago. Here, Michael, we see the cars are spinning up there. I guess that's Sterling Marlin. As he goes around, yes, yes there's Sterling Marlin on the inside, and he accelerates down the back stretch. And watch as he goes down in turn three. There's Schrader, who's just getting going in. Michael just plows right in the back of Schrader. Evidently, he's talking on the radio, distracting something. And I'm told that the 77 car was tagged from behind, spun, and made contact with the wall. That's where the damage came from Bobby Hillen's car. All ready to go green once again with Jeff Gordon, Ward Burton running second, then Dale Jarrett, Rusty Wallace, and Bill Elliott. You'll recall that Jeff Gordon started on the pole in last year's 46-hour 77 bands behind the wall over here, David. Jeff led 156 of the first 200 laps and then was involved in a crash. Rusty Wallace was a big winner on those pit stops. He came out in fourth place. He was running about seventh before that caution. And some of those guys were fitting on the back stretch also. Dale Earnhardt and Ernie Irvin made some great strides in those pit stops. John Patton is the Bobby Hill. Bobby's still working on his car back in the garage area on the back stretch pits. And Bobby, did you get a little help there? Did somebody run into you? What happened? I don't know what happened. All I know, our car was running great. We were going to have a great race today. People just aren't paying attention. There's two crossings on the racetrack, and people don't slow down. I slowed down just a little bit, and I got tagged. And it's just, I, I don't know, you know, it's just, it's just uncalled for. Well, that's Bobby Hill, and you can hear how upset he is about what is happening. He doesn't even know who hit him. It's just uh, they didn't slow down when there was a caution on the, out on the track, guys. See, Earnhardt was able to get by Ricky did beat him out of the pits, but Earnhardt passed him on the racetrack. Puts Dale up in the 13th spot now. This is Mark Martin. As he goes down in the corner, Bobby Labonte gets by Jimmy Spencer. Spencer tries to come back on the inside of Labonte. Can't make it. That's Jimmy Spencer in the yellow car. And Mark Martin has his mirror full of his teammate, for a Jeff Green. At least it's comforting to know that you got a buddy there on your, uh, <laughs> on your tail on this racetrack. Right behind Burton is the uh, ominous number three. Here at Bumper Cam on Martin Martin as he looks back at his teammate. just past Ernie Irving, and Ernie Irving is struggling right now because Kenny Wallace just passed him about two laps ago and had just driven away from Ernie, so he is struggling in that Texaco Havlin car. He's back in about 17th position right now, Ernie Irving is. Hut Strickland is coming up behind him, so is Joe Nemechek. And Nemechek leads. Ted Musgrave, Jeff Bodine, and now we're with Ted Musgrave. Ryan Star Carbon. 
camera on the roof of the automobile. It's a really neat story concerning Ted Musgrave. He says if he wins this race, he's going to buy the engine and give it to his dad because his dad, when he was running the short tracks, when they were getting the engine ready to race that weekend, he's always saying, this is my Darlington engine that I'm going to win with this weekend. And uh, Ted, in honor of that, is going to give the engine to his dad if he wins here today and when he ever wins a Darlington. That was a neat story. Of course, his dad's name was Elmer Musgrave, raced for many years. And look at Musgrave come off the corner, gets a run on Nemechek. Does he have him? Uh, yeah. I think so, or is he? Yes. Nemechek did back off and let Musgrave go. There's a seven car, Jeff Lodine. Now Jeremy Mayfield is behind Joe Nemechek, along with Gary Cope. Michael Walker just went a lap down to the leaders, and now the other cars are coming up on him, and he went into turn three, and some cars came in a lot faster than Michael was running going into that turn, and it was about to be a wreck up there, but everybody got through okay. Michael gets back in line, so the city goes forward. Looks like he's just going to have to ride it out here this afternoon. I would guess that's exactly what's going to happen. And Kenny Strader has been black flagged by the NASCAR officials. Evidently, some of that cheating up is starting to come looser, and they're afraid it's going to fall on the racetrack, so they've black flagged him, and he's got to go to the pits and tie it up. So it's still Jeff Gordon leading the Trans-South Financial 400 over Ward Burton, Dale Jarrett, Rusty Wallace, and Bill Elliott. We'll be right back. Southern 500 last year leads the 1996 Trans South Financial 400 at Darlington. There is Ward Burton, and third is Dale Jarrett. Jerry Punch has an update. This car Ward Burton is driving is Paul Woody Pontiac. It doesn't resemble, it may resemble on the outside, but on the inside, the car that's set on the pole. We documented against the wall in the last practice yesterday, and take a look at all this. Listen to all they change. Rear end housing, trailing arms. Right front suspension, new spindles, and an all-new steering mechanism. Now, Bill Davis, the car owner, told me that they told Ward to take it easy. Lead a lap, and back off and get into a rhythm. That's why they went ahead and let the 24 car go by. They made a pit stop. Ward said the car feels very, very good, but I'm still not going to punish it. Make sure we got everything straight, and we don't tear up a left front tire. So I'm going to get a rhythm, and just run comfortably for now, as Dale Darren starts to close in on the second-place driver. All right, Jerry, again, a Napa field summary being shown for you, your favorite driver and where he's running at the moment. We have the top 36 cars still on the lead lap. Only five are down at least one lap. See Kenny Wallace up there in 13th spot in the square D car. We saw him just a moment ago in front of Jimmy Spencer. He is running a much higher line than anyone on the racetrack. There, Ernie Irving dives under Ricky Rudd, gets a tremendous run on Rudd down the front stretch, and Ricky's going to lose at least two spots. Scott Strickland comes right along in the car number eight. That's the fast two, and there's Musgrave riding right on Ricky Rudd's bumper. Rudd's car looks a little unstable there, Denny. It's not good, that's for sure, Ned, as Musgrave tries his best to get alongside. Can't quite make it. down a couple of laps. He had already been lapped. They said his car was extremely loose. Uh, he had already been lapped before that caution. And now he's got another lap there. Now we see Rudd go drift high. Musgrave trying to get alongside. And he cannot make it. And a pretty good run there coming off the second corner, but Rudd just pulled away from him on the straightaway. on the wall that Jerry talked about earlier in the show. Here's Ricky Craven and Terry Labonte running together for sixth position, sixth and seventh there. And right ahead of him is Bill Elliott. Bill, of course, running in the fifth position. Ricky Craven started this race in 14th position. On lap eight, he was up to 15th worked his way all the way to sixth at the end of 42 laps, but as we say that, he loses one to Terry Labonte. And we see that Jeff Burton in the 99 car has passed his teammate, 
that the new engine in the Elliott car is uh, working pretty well for Bill right now. He's in fifth position. And about 11.30 this morning, they discovered they had an engine problem, and there Elliott gets a tough break, catches the 25 car. They cost him probably a half second of time getting around the racetrack. As a matter of fact, he's going to lose the spot to Terry Labonte. If he isn't here. That's just how critical it is getting around the track here. Boy, you lift just for an instant, and that's what you lose. fast in practice yesterday afternoon, and he's still fast here today. He's been able to get by Bobby Labonte, the interstate batter's guard. And, and there's plenty of victims right in front of him. <laughs> Burton is 14th in the point standings going into this race, despite the fact that he lost or didn't compete in one race. He didn't make it. He passed Ricky Craven there. Picked up another spot. The interval between first seventh is 9.23 seconds and we'll see just what jeff burton can do with jeff gordon can he in fact gain on him in front of them terry labonte looking on the inside of him cannot make the pass it's 9.51 so he's losing ground to jeff gordon yep of course i think everybody uh, here is yeah. <laughs> starting to say they're all are Benny. here's labonte making another bid for the elegant position and he he moves to fifth, and Jerry has an update on Bill. Well, I just have an engine trouble an hour before race time. Weren't trouble enough for that elegant team. The race day crew this morning that normally flies out of Hickory boarded an airplane at Hickory Airport, and they started to take off. They lost an engine on the twin-engine airplane that was supposed to fly in the Darlington. Now, fortunately, they were still on the ground and able to get the plane stopped. They had to call a backup plane in from Dawsonville, Georgia, to fly to Hickory pick them up, and they just got here an hour before the race, and they run in the garage to see if anything they've left to do, and find out their race car has a blown engine sitting in the garage, or an engine that has a problem, so it has not been a good day. He's used to overcoming obstacles, though, and don't count him out of this one just yet. Terry Labonte leading Elliott, and Jeff Burton, and Ricky Craven, and Bobby Labonte. And here is the leader. Jeff Gordon has a rather comfortable lead at the moment over Jarrett, Burton, Wallace, and Labonte with 53 of the 293 laps completed. Welcome back to Darlington in the Trent South Financial 400. Jeff Gordon, car 24, the leader of the race. He's about to put a lap on Rick Mast, who is running in 32nd spot. Talked to Rick last night at the restaurant having dinner, and he said that uh, 
Clark just didn't feel comfortable. He said he couldn't get the push out of it. As Benny said at the top of the show, most of them were having problems with push, and he was definitely one of them. He said he had too much downforce on the rear of the car. You know, we talked about 173.79 miles per hour with a pole speed for Earl Burton, and we made a lot about that. Here's a camera on Morgan Shepard's car. Look in 1991 what the pole speed was, 161.9. And here it is just five years later, it's 173.7. So we're looking at 12 miles per hour almost increased in just five years. That's unbelievable. It really is. And it went up three years, just or three miles an hour, just since last year. So the speeds are definitely faster here at Darlington in 96. Jeremy Mayfield has been losing some positions of uh, recent. He's back to 26 position. Jerry, what's the problem there? Well, Bob, after qualifying ninth, he has the same problem that the drivers were telling Dan about at dinner last night. He has a very, very bad push. I talked to Tony Furr. They took two rounds of bite out of the car on that first pit stop at lap 21 when the caution came out, but the car still is literally plowing in the corner. He turns a steering wheel hard left, and the car continues to go straight. So let's go check in with Bill Weber. Jeff Burton qualified 21st and is charging through the field, but he, too, is reporting he likes his car, he likes the way it feels, but it is pushing in three and four. They will make a chassis adjustment when he pits. And when can we expect the pit stops here? We're on lap number 60. Well, of course, they stopped on lap 20 when right. we had that other caution, so they're going to run about uh, 35 laps on the green, so they should be able to go another 25 or so. Jeff Burton started 21st. On the 59th lap is running in seventh spot in the Exide Batteries Four. Michael Walter, the Sitco car, once again is in the pit area on the back stretch. He's been slow around the racetrack with all the damage on the right side. He almost brushed the wall down in turns one and two a moment ago and has taken the car to the pit on the back. Or rather, uh, Jeff Gordon continues to lead this race. Jeff, of course, won at Richmond earlier this year. He's coming up on a lot of traffic, it looks like. And there's the interval back to second position, Dale Jarrett. Well, it's back up to about three seconds. Dale has cut it down to under two, and he got behind Joe Nemechek the last time around and lost about a second up between turn three and four. But Benny pointed out that's easy to happen when you come up on a slower car and you just have to back off until you can get a good place to pass. Nemechek and Wally Dolan back running their neck, uh, nose to tail. Here is the third place car of Ward Burton, the pole sitter in the race and the one eligible for $114,000 in Unicom bonus money should he go on to win this race. Dropping on back now, there's fourth place, and Terry Amani, and fifth, Rusty Wallace. And that has just changed. Terry Amani getting around Rusty Wallace, taking over fourth. And we have a car on pit road. Jimmy Spencer comes in. That would be a little earlier than we thought. I assume that he pitted when everybody else did. In fact, I know he did because he would have been the leader if he had not. Pulling a fender away there on the right side. This, up on the scoring pylon once again. Dale has reduced the interval between himself and Jeff to 1.65 seconds, but remember, we showed you a lap ago that Jeff Gordon was coming up on some rather heavy traffic, and that has allowed Dale Jarrett to close in. And he's still got a lot of traffic to go through. Yes, he does, and the longer they run on these tires, the hotter they get, the harder it is to get through that traffic. He's going to get by Mike Wallace there in the 90 car. There we see Dale Jarrett, the Ford Quality Care car, closing in to just a second and a quarter. But again, he has to pass the same traffic now that Jeff Gordon is passing. And it just depends on where they catch that. They can catch him on the straightaway here, and the guys move over. They don't lose anything. But if they catch him, like going down in the corner, just like he's catching Rick Mass, it can cost them some time. Here's Ricky Rudd going to the inside of Hutt Strickland. They're about a straightaway. Those cars are straightaway up in front of Jeff Gordon. He's coming up to put a lap on Dave Marcus there now. Dave Marcus running in 29th position. 1.32 seconds between first and second. And just uh, simply because of the traffic. And like Benny said, where are they catching? 
but now Jeff Gordon is right in the middle of that traffic. Whoa, it's down below a second. Well, Jeff is uh, having a little trouble getting around the Dave Marcus car. And Jarrett's got clean running there just for a little bit at least. He's got one car between he and the Jeff Gordon. That's Mike Wallace. As we watch his Kyle Petty is taking the tour's right car and figure in the back trip. Oh! What was that? What in the world was that? <laughs> A big boom, but I think everybody's okay. Boy, it scared us, though. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> jumped in the boot. I don't know if that happened wow. here in the boot or no, I see anybody laying on the floor here. <laughs> everybody's standing, so uh, I can't Boy, help but think heavy, that heavy, heavy traffic. traffic. And Jeremy Mayfield looks like he's headed for pit road. He's speed now. Watch your speed. 4,800. Jeremy at the watch your speed, 4,800 RPM. Hey, Tony. Yeah, windshield good, Tony, because it's in bad shape. Tony for the quick. Hey, come on in here. There you go. Feel good, clean, guys. Here's Jerry. Told you about 10 laps ago, Wayne Field's car. Got off. Had a terrible, terrible push. The car just, he was having a hard time keeping it off the wall. We showed you at the top of the day what happens when you don't keep it off the wall. You end up with uh, your imprint there in the Darlington concrete. Right side and left side tires have going on. Put your finger out. Go, go, go. And he said, you heard him say, go, 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 go. He wanted, wanted to get that windshield nice and clean. Having a tough time seeing here in Darlington. Just a little shy of 24 seconds for Jeremy as Jeff Gordon continues to battle the traffic out there on the racetrack. He still can't get around Dave Marcus, but Jared is having a tough time getting by Mike uh, Wallace. Yes, he is. Jared slowed down oh. considerably here. Maybe just to back off in case what happens there. I don't know. He might have saw something coming up there, and his spotter said, hey, back off. There's trouble ahead. Or could be. Dale Jarrett goes all the way to the apron of the racetrack to get by John Andretti. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon, the last time down in turn one, was alongside Dave Marcus. But Marcus raced into the corner, and Gordon just simply cannot get by him. So Marcus, for the moment, stays on the lead lap in 28th position. Jeff Gordon unable to pass him. Dale Jarrett running in second spot. We'll be back with more live coverage moment of the Trans South Financial 400. The battle continues on the racetrack here at Darlington as Jeff Gordon continues to lead. He did get by Dave Marcus finally. And now you see Dale Jarrett going to the bottom side of the racetrack to also put a lap on Dave Marcus or at least try to. Now he will get it done at the end of the back stretch. So Jeff Gordon has passed Robert Presley, the 33 car. He's 25th, so there are 24 cars that are now on the lead lap. Ever seen Lake Speed in the spam car? He was just left by Jeff Gordon. He was another one of those cars that was involved in the accident just afternoon with Ward Burton. Here is Steve Grissom coming into the pits on the back stretch. They've gone 50 laps under green. This could be a normal routine pit stop. Here's John. Bob, over here, and a lot of these guys complaining the cars are very, very loose. Robert Presley pulling also onto the back stretch of his Chevrolet Monte Carlo as Andy Petrie and the crews will go to work for the fourth tire change here. Grissom's crew all the way around, swinging around to the left side, already full of fuel. No chassis adjustment as yet for Steve Grissom and Fred Flintstone. Watch his feet. And he is down and away. Ward Burton coming in on the first stretch. So let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. Our pole center making his second pick stop of the day. Pitted initially on lap 20 when the first caution flag came out. Has not complained at all, so the car feels very, very good to it. Expecting a routine stop. NASCAR has okayed an additional man over the wall now because the windshield have become a problem. Visibility becoming a problem. You heard Jeremy Mayfield a minute ago said, please, please clean the windshield. That's the same plea that Ward Burton made. Left side tires went on the MBNA Pontiac as he getting ready to pull the jack, and he is down and away. Let's go to Bill Weber. 
And here's Jeff Burton on pit road for tire change fuel. They'll clean the windshield, as Jerry mentioned, getting difficult to see. The 43 wheels around the 99 and pulls into his stall. They switch to the left side now on the 99 while they go to work on the right side of Bobby Hamilton in the 43 car. Wedge adjustment, big wedge adjustment on the 43. Now they come around to the left side. Burton is down. He's away. Expect the rest of the leaders in very soon. They work on the left side of the 43. Top it off with gas. Brush off the front fender to clean off the air dams and Bobby Hamilton returns. Brett Godine is on pit road and uh, he's getting service on his Lowe's Ford as out on the racetrack. Jeff Gordon continues to pick him off. Oh. But look at Jarrett. Ooh, he had a notion. Tried to get on the inside of Gordon to take that lead away. He needs to lead this race and get those five bonus points and Jeff Gordon drives up on the outside of Jeff Godine there to pass Bodine and now Jarrett gets by Jeff also. Well, Jeff's got to come into the pits. Yeah, you're right, uh, Benny. Dale Jarrett needs to lead and get those five bonus points. As we mentioned, Jeff Bodine drops down off the racetrack. He finds his pit. Ricky Rudd, meanwhile, is in on the back pits, or at least coming in. Stop. John Curtin will call this stop. Ricky Rudd slows down to get into his pit stall. He's the first car pitted here on the back stretch. Actually, if you look at it, he's got the first exit spot. And they will go to work cleaning that windshield. Jeff Bodine leaves the front stretch pits. And now Rudd guys swinging around to action on the left side. Right sides are changed. They have not made a chassis adjustment. They haven't bumped up the spoiler. Ricky's the car not exactly right, but they still haven't made any adjustments. Already full of fuel. They finally get all the blood dust tightened and he is away. Let's go to Bill Weber in Craven's pit. And here is Ricky Craven in the car that he ran so well with at Rockingham. Four tires stop, plenty of fuel. They scrape the windshield clean and we'll go to the front grill as well all these guys get their tires and their fuel cradle with another strong run right side's already on second can of gas going in looking to pull out the left side a little slow on the jack coming around waiting on plenty of fuel in waiting for mark mark to come down pit road working on the 41 left side run car is down and ricky craven's away and now here comes mark martin pulling down pit road his crew over the wall everybody's been talking about well, Mark Martin's running the exact same setup he ran in yesterday's first race, in which he ran so extraordinarily well. He make one round of chassis adjustments. His car was set up to be a little bit of loose. So he's got his car where he wants it. They've got the right side down. The fuel is in. Working on the left side. And behind him, Terry Lamont is going to tell him for Craig Chevrolet on the pit road. Again, more tires. Working lap 85 here at Darlington. The 75 also pulls on the pit road. They really work on the windshield. Bob Holt leading that off. So Terry Labonte can see his way around. 75 working on the right side. Now the Jack Matt around to the left. Working on the left side of the Kellogg Chevrolet. Waiting to drop the car. Working on the right. Left rear. Pellum with the left rear on Terry Labonte's car. He's away. Back to the 75. Plenty of fuel. And the 75 waiting to go. Dale Earnhardt with John Curran on the back side. A four-tire change for Dale Earnhardt who has complained to his crew, David Smith, the crew chief that the car is so loose and unglavable. They're already finished on the right side. Around the left, they've already made a chassis adjustment. Around the wedge, and the left rear trying to tighten that car up. They've also bumped up the rear spoiler. Left rear going on, left front going on. Earnhardt gunning the engine. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And now Earnhardt, a little bit of a problem. Left that fell off on the right front, but now they finally get it tight. Let's look at the rear car. As Jeff Gordon comes in, Bill Elliott and Rusty Wallace will be leaving. And they will change right side tires. And you see that Elliott car is now Rusty Wallace is Elliott in there. Fletcher just on the right rear of Rusty Wallace's car. Right side tires, now left side tires. Jeff Gordon has complained to Ray Everton that his car was getting loose. That's why he's taking his time trying to pass Dave Marcus a moment ago. But they will make no adjustments on the chassis. As Gordon is down and away, we are expecting that here comes the, the leader of the race, Dale Jarrett. Quality care. Credit leasing for Thunderbird, the Robert Yates team, Todd Parrott and company going to work. Winner of the 1996 Daytona 500. Uh, Jarrett had been complaining that the car was a little bit tight. But in the longer run, the car was getting better and better. So if we get a long green flag run, a minute ago, the crew would tell me, he said, we'll be able to catch the 24 car and 
Castle. Left side car is going on. And they're off the jack. And down on the way. Let's check in with John Turner. Jerry almost thought that Ernie Irvin was going to overshoot his pits because he slipped to a stop, but he got it just stopped. The car just stopped before the line. The crew is already finished on the right side. They swing around to the left side. They say there's a crash coming out of turn two. It looks like it's John Andretti and Jeff Bodine as they got together coming out of turn two. The caution flag is out. Irvin's crew completes the work, and he is now down in the way. Who's that going to hurt, guys? I think everybody has stopped excepting Bobby Labonte. Yep, possible exception of Bobby Labonte, who has stayed out there, and he's going to be on the lap by himself, maybe. He just might be on a lead, on a lap to his own, because he has stretched his pit stop and caught a caution. Jeff Bodine and John Andretti were involved in, oh, oh look there, when everybody trying to get slowed down, and Jerry Mayfield made contact with Hutt and a wall. Yeah, the, the pace car picks him up going into turn three, and uh, so Bobby Labonte had slowed down to let the pace car get out there, and they didn't realize it. And now here comes Labonte in for his pit stop, but there is going to be much more activity on pit road because everybody else was just in. Well, no one else could pit. That's right. Right. He's the only guy that can pit. They have to wait till the next time around. Let's go to the pits of Bill Weber. Well, Rick fans, you don't see this very often. Only one guy has pit road all to himself. Now, Jeff Lodine's also on pit road further down at the other end. But Bobby Labonte's here for a casual four-tire change, jamming some fuel, clean off the windshield and the front grill. The water bottle comes flying back out. He's got plenty of fuel in. Now the 23 dips by. Working on the left front, they had a problem with a lot and away. They're working on Jeff Bodine's car very feverishly up in the right front corner of the car. We can see the heavy, heavy damage to the right door on Bodine's QVC car. Let's see if we can tell exactly what happened as it came off the second corner. It's already happened. But Andretti comes down and smacks the wall hard on the inside. A lot of damage to the Kmart Little Caesars car. But Bodine stops, I think, before he makes too much contact with the wall. Most of the damage is done to the right door on his car. So a caution here at Darlington has really scrambled the standings. We'll be back to check things out in just a moment in the Trans-South Financial 400. ESPN Speed World coverage from Darlington, South Carolina being brought to you by New Miller Beer. Root from the heart of the hops for a beer with heart that goes down easy. Reach for what's out there. By TM8 Engine Treatment from Valvoline because driving is more stop than go. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. Here's John Kernan. Anna back in the garage area with John Andretti, who has climbed from the car. He's okay. He's walked back here. That's the good news. Bad news is, man, the race car looks really torn up. What happened? Well, we um, got covered up real bad by oil, and I don't know who was oiling. And um, had to pit early. And um, went back out. Uh, there was a guy behind me that had a little bit fresher tires on me. And um, I got a little tight coming off the two and, and um, got hit a couple times real hard in the back. And... Came our little Caesar's car down. Uh, not sure why that happened. All right, thank you, John. Good to see you. Okay, Bob. Well, we're still under caution, getting set for the restart here. We're 94 laps into this event. Stay with us. We've just missed a half a lap. They just went green once again. After five laps of caution, the leader of the race is the 18 car of Bobby Labonte, but there are uh, 16 cars that are on the lead lap, and look at Labonte weaving through the traffic. No, the, the traffic is weaving around yeah. him. <laughs> man, oh man, he was caught back there by some score cars, and all these guys scrambling, trying to get back in the lead lap. Now the fans wonder, what we said Bobby Labonte was in a lap by himself. He was until he came into the pits. Then when he came into the pits, all of those that were one lap down came on around, and he had to come out behind them, so they were uh, technically on the lead lap at, at the tail end of the lead lap. Yeah, all those cars in front of Bobby Labonte here are at the tail end of the lead lap. And John Kernan has more on Dale Earnhardt. 
Well, we told you earlier how Dale it told the crew the car was so loose it was undrivable. Well, he took advantage of that last caution. We dive back on the pit road, take on four tires, and they also removed the rubber from the right rear. We'll have to wait and see if that does the trick for Earnhardt, whose car has not been right ever since the green flag fell. Earnhardt in 16th position in the 22 car of Ward Burton, also losing spots. Jerry may have some kind of problem. Jerry Punch, what's going on? Last time by, Dale Jarrett, radio crew chief, Todd Chris. I think I got a left rear going down. Left rear, left rear. So the car is very, very loose to the crew. The quality care crew jumped up on the wall there, standing by. Now, Jarrett's coming around this time. He just said a moment ago, the car is very, very loose. And he had been tight before. He's running third behind Labonte Gordon, then Jarrett, then Terry Labonte, Jeff Burton. There's a scoring pylon for you. It could be that they've let some air pressure out of that left rear tire, and before it builds up, he is going to feel extremely loose. It may be something in four or five laps will cure itself. By the way, this is the first time that Bobby Labonte has ever led at this racetrack in his seventh appearance. He's doing a pretty good job leading right now because he's got about a mile lead. <laughs> That's right. Punch has more on Dale Jarrett. What's the story now, Doc? Just talked to Todd Parrott a moment ago. Todd said they did not make any kind of air pressure change, but we did take a round of bite out of the car because the car had been so tight, had a bad push. He said that car must be so sensitive because Dale went off into turn one and the car skated up across the racetrack and was just so very loose he was chasing the race car. But now Dale has settled in. Apparently we do not have a left rear tire going down. The car is just very, very sensitive to wedge changes. Still feeling a lot of pressure, though, from Ricky Rudd, who's right on his back bumper, although not in the same lap as Dale. After he passed Rudd, he had pulled away for a little bit. Now Rudd and Mike Wallace have moved back up on him. It doesn't appear as Dale's car is nearly as good as it was before that last pit stop. No. Showing you not only numbers, but manufacturer and uh, drivers in the scoring pylon now. And a couple of Chevys up front. Fords in the top ten. And there's one of the Fords, Bill Elliott, and Morgan Shepard, who 
look to the inside there at the end of the straightaway. And here comes Elliott trying to get on the inside of Benson. Just can't do it. Look how when he gets off the gasoline, off the accelerator, look how much momentum he loses, and Morgan just blows by. So Morgan picks up fifth. You know, we saw when they make, hey, look at Ernie Irvin dive to the inside of Martin Martin, take that spot away. When we saw those guys making the pit stop, the drivers making the pit stop, we saw the guys over there working on those windshields. And, man, they were really working. Look why they were working. Wow. The drivers are just unable to see through that on the right side. And look what they've done on the left side. At least now the drivers have some visibility. Uh, Any idea what caused it that? Someone was talking about some, a driver out there car losing oil. Mm -hmm. They don't really know who it is, but... Boy, imagine trying to look through that, though, at 180 miles. Uh, no, thanks. Clear, clear. <laughs> Here's a pass for fourth place. That was easy for Jack. And how about that? He huh? just drove on by. Man. Terry Labonte didn't resist him at all. He must have seen him coming and said, okay, you have that spot. They can't get up to the leader. Yeah, he's too far away. So the best thing they do is ride. Be careful here at this point. Hope for a caution so they can go all the way around and catch up to the leader. There's the 88. You saw the interval there that uh, there was between the second and third. Yeah, and the second and third, third, and fourth. third and fourth are gaining on Dale Jarrett. He is definitely, as Benny said, not running as good as he did a little bit earlier. that Dale might have got up into the fence here a couple of laps ago. Let's see what happened as he came out of turn four and whoop, little Darlington stripe there. Almost got it. About six more inches, Ned, he would have had real problems. Yes, he would have. And from the roof cam, bumper cam, he just, we saw just a little bit of dust as he just touched the wall as he came off the corner. Is that where Jerry Punch did his, his uh, stand up at the start of the show? Yep. So, so that next time he'd say, well, here, Dale yeah. Jarrett's marking That's now. right, yep. There's Dale at work as the leader, Bobby Labonte, is mired back into some heavy traffic. And John Kernan has more on who might be putting down some oil out there. Who is it, John? Bob, we're not sure if it's oil or what, but Wally Dollarback Jr. in the 15 car with that brand new purple and steel paint job has radioed in and told his crew that he's got some kind of fluid coming into the cockpit of the car. Wally has gotten behind the long line of cars, running in the last, uh, the last car in that line, and what some of the other cars who've been following Wally said, yeah, some oil's coming out of that car and getting onto our windshield. So Wally's crew standing here on the football ramp to see if Wally indeed needs to come in and make a pit stop. And right now, everybody's just waiting and watching. All right, we'll uh, see if Wally uh, makes a pit stop soon. There we see Steve Grissom going by the 23 car of Jimmy Spencer. Bill Earnhardt, and here comes Spencer back on the inside. Wow. And they're fighting for their life to stay in the lead left. You see, there's Bobby Labonte right behind them. He's driving very carefully there behind them. But uh, they're trying to stay in that lead left. And right in front of these cars is Dale Earnhardt, the good race Chevrolet. And he's fighting to stay in the lead left as well. Exactly. You'll notice your scoring pile on the Jeff Burton past the 88 to move to third. There is Earnhardt. And we'll show you how that occurred. Looks like it's the end of the back stretch. Yep. Looks like it happened very easily. Jared obviously having some hand problems. The best thing he can do is just hang in there and wait for the next pit stop. Terry Labonte is also past Dale Jarrett, putting him back. So it's Labonte, Gordon, Burton, Terry Labonte, and Dale Jarrett at the moment with 115 of the 293 laps completed. Battered machine is seven laps down in 36 after an early race incident. Now the leader, Bobby Labonte, the interstate batteries car, did get by Steve Grissom. Puts him a lap down. And there you see Earnhardt on the left of your screen, right in front of Jimmy Spencer. Spencer in the 23 car, the Smoke and Joe's car. 17th, 18th, and 1st right there. And 19th. 
Yeah, and Grissom sneaking back up on the back end of Labonte's car. So with Bobby Labonte out front, we'll take another break and be back with more as the food is being prepared in the concession stand. Darlington. The caution has come out. We'll tell you why in a moment. Let's watch to see if Dale Earnhardt does stay on the lead lap. I don't think that Steve Grissom did, but he gave it all he had and had to go to the bottom of the racetrack to avoid hitting the cars. Did you get him, Steve? No. <laughs> There's the confirmation. He didn't get him. Here's why we're under caution. Look at Bobby Labonte and Jimmy Spencer. Boom. Spencer comes off the corner, gets the car a little bit loose. When he backs off the gas to save it, a little bit of a bump from Labonte just turns him into the wall, and we can see the sheet metal on the right front, pieces of that sheet metal of that fender fell off his car, and that's why the caution flag is out. He was on the front stretch directly in front of us. Yeah, you saw that Spencer kept going, but there's quite a bit of debris here on the front straightaway caused by that. Now, here comes Bobby Labonte down off the banking on the pit road. And the others will be following. And now all the cars in the lead lap can go on pit road with Labonte. Bobby leading Spencer down. Here's Bill Weber. Well, Bobby Labonte trying to recapture what's been a dismal season. There's a triple pit. You can see the 18, the 24, the 99 all on pit road. Four tires and fuel for these guys. Bobby's car's been a little tight, but Jimmy Maycar is happy with how he's running. They're working on the left side. And about to drop the 18 down, he'll head down toward the 24 pit where Jerry Punch is standing by. Already right side tires, and they've also already made a chassis adjustment on the Gordon car. Left side going on his car as Dale Jarrett coming in. Remember, they were hoping to get a caution flag as the 18 car is out. Here's the 99 down the road. That's Jeff Burton and the five car and Dale Jarrett racing the end of pit road. Let's go to here's John Curtis. Over here on the back stretch, Ernie Irvin is in. It'll be a full tire change. Just talked to Larry McGriddles a few moments ago. He told me, hey, the car is the best that it's been. In fact, on the long green flag run before this, they lost only about a second from the time they started to run until they changed tires. It was almost a full fuel stop. Ernie is down and away. Also, Sterling Marlin has just been in, and he has taken off four tires. Dale Earnhardt was due in, but he did not stop because he has told the crew that the orange flag was out. So we're expecting to see Earnhardt back here on pit road where they will also where they will make a tire pressure adjustment and also uh, take the wedge back out because the car has just gotten so tight, Dale says it will not turn. So under caution, pit stops occurring. We'll take a break here while the action is away from the racetrack. Back from Darlington in just a moment. is still out here at Darlington because of an incident here on the front straightaway involving Jimmy Spencer. And there is Spencer's car with damage on the right front. He's been into the pits and now pulls out. We uh, will tell you that Dale Earnhardt stayed out there long enough to lead a lap, so he too picks up Eight or bonus points. Listening to race control. 28 or 12. information super highway nascar online at www.nascar.com will bring you the same real-time electronic timing and scoring that winston cup series officials use to monitor their races this was delivered to the 12. you can watch the progress of any car on the track and you can send email directly to the nascar officials nascar online www.nascar.com and a reminder that kenny Maine will have nascar tonight rpm tonight at 8 o'clock, bringing you the highlights of this event, the IRL, Duraloo 200 in Phoenix, and the World of Outlaws as they continue their sprint car season. 8 o'clock tonight on ESPN2. And I'll be on tomorrow night. Oh, I can't wait to see that. Channel 3. Uh, RPM, no, me and John Curtin. Yeah, it's fun to see you on Monday and uh, Punch on Tuesday. And, uh, 
us up to date on everything that's going on. There's just a small part of this huge crowd on hand here. There's the green. from the car and he may have spun in his own oil anyway he's at the bottom of the racetrack but it is enough to bring out another caution and right now Robert Presley is in front of the leader Jeff Burton let's see if Robert can stay on the lead lap as they come down and yes he will so Jeff Burton is your leader Jeff Gordon then Bobby Labonte Dale Jarrett and Terry Labonte your top five Fifth caution of the afternoon comes on lap 132. Let's take a look at it once again up in the fourth, third and fourth corners. Uh-oh, there we see the engine going in the 12 car. He comes down on the apron of the racetrack. He's slow. And he's starting to go in the pits, but unfortunately there's so much sand and debris going in the pits. That's why he spun out was from the sand and debris, not the engine. How do I know so well? Because I did that at least twice in my career. <laughs> Spoken from experience. Experience, <laughs> yes. Well, I don't think we'll see pit stops. They haven't run that long. And those up front, if the leader don't come in, they don't want to give up track position. Some of the fellows back at the last of the line will come in. The 33 car will probably fit. Maybe Bobby Hamilton. We're approaching the halfway point of this 400-mile race here at Darlington. It's Jeff Burton out front. We'll take a break and be back in just a moment. Still under caution here at Darlington Raceway in South Carolina. We're under caution because of a spin involving Derek Cope, but the fourth caution of the afternoon was caused by this incident coming off of corner number four, and it involved Jimmy Spencer and the green car of Bobby Labonte. Spencer into the wall hard, and you gotta feel that because of that damage, there was damage to the crush panels. What are the crush panels? Were they the subject of this week's track fact? Track facts are brought to you by Quaker State, the motor oil that exceeds the highest standards of engine protection. You've heard us talk about crush panels. What are they? Well, right now they're getting crushed. It's an aluminum panel that goes between the frame and the body to keep the fumes out of the race car. There we see the panels in the front. There are the panels in the rear. Joe Bessie in practice on Friday hit the wall and bent his crush panel had to put in a new one to keep those fumes coming in the car and get in the driver sick. 
So once again, the crush panel seals the outside of the body to the frame so that air doesn't get in the driver's compartment. See the little black box at the bottom of your screen? That's an electronic transponder NASCAR is using for a new scoring system. And that scoring system right now tells us that there are 99 cars, 90, the 99 car is the leader and there are 17 on the lead lap. That, that scoring system, by the way, is experimental. Yes, it's not the system they're using now. They're right. just trying to perfect it. So when they put it in use, it will be up and running the first crack out of the box. Here we go. Extreme skill and power NASCAR. I agree with you. <laughs> Got it. Green flag restart. Lap 136. We had four laps of caution. We're back to racing. because he took a lick. Yes, we can see when the rims are bent, when the wheels on the race cars are bent in that manner, that was bent. That's some pretty heavy damage. Let's see if we can tell exactly what happened. We see Ernie Irvin gets the car completely sideways, goes around. I didn't know Ernie was in the wreck. I didn't either. And Ernie comes back, and I don't think he's going to hit anything. But meanwhile, Nemechek spins a Burger King car. Without a doubt, Ward Burton did sustain the most damage of all the cars involved. He's out of the car, waving to the crowd, and is okay. Here it is from our speed shot underneath the uh, score stand, the starting stand. Well, there you see Ernie getting sideways and spinning backwards. So it must have been sort of a chain reaction deal behind him. The nine car of Lake Speed is damaged in the front end, and I have a feeling that he hit Ernie in the rear here as Ernie tries to get straightened out, right? There, yes. There, yeah. We see him come into the shot. Mm -hmm. So that means that there's some damage to the rear end of uh, Ernie Irvin, probably. Yeah, Lake Speed. Boy, you can see Ward Burton hitting hard down on the inside, and here's Nemechek's car coming down to the inside. You see Earnhardt and Robert Presley and others coming through back at the back of the pack. And for Lake Speed, boy, this has been a tough weekend for him. I don't think we mentioned, we talked about Ward Burton uh, wrecking his pole sitting car yesterday. He was involved with Lake Speed. Lake Speed had to go to a backup car. Now he's torn up to backup car, or at least he has damage on it. We have a lot of damaged equipment here, and Ernie Irvin comes in. So does Lake Speed, and Ward Burton's car is here on the front straightaway. All tore up. Back in just a moment. ESPN Speed World today at Darlington Raceway in South Carolina, the Trans-South Financial 400. Well, ESPN begins its seventh year of Sunday Night Baseball with the opening might match up between the White Sox and the Mariners. Mariners coming off a memorable playoff run, defeating the Angels, and then knocking off the Yankees in five games. Sunday Night Baseball at seventh season begins next Sunday at 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. It's still snowing up in Indianapolis. It can't be baseball season yet. <laughs> Pace cars off. Getting set for the restart. Ready now. Pay attention. Be ready. Steve, go 
going green this time, buddy. Be on your toes. Let's get ready, buddy. Get ready. I'm ready. 19 car will be coming up behind you. Roy the tower. Stand by, Roy. summary for you now. The numbers in parentheses once again are the starting positions. Earnhardt started 27th, is now 12th. Sterling Marlin started 32nd, is 14th. And Ernie Irwin started 32nd and is 15th. I mean, look, I wish, and we got a crash down and Jimmy Spencer's on the wall down at one and two. And he's up against the ball. This will bring out the caution flag once again. Our seventh caution of the afternoon comes out with Jimmy Spencer's car up against the wall in the second corner. And here comes the field down to get the caution with Jeff leading. And that's the halfway mark. So Jeff Gordon will pick up the Gatorade $10,000 halfway money. Yep. Here's Bill with Ward Burton. And Bob, uh, this driver and his team are crushed. They are very disappointed. Ward, what happened? I don't know. 28, somebody got together. And uh, I was directly behind it. Didn't feel like I had but one way to go, and that was low. And uh, had quite a bit of rear brake in the car and tapped the brakes. Got down low and probably got the stuff and just spun out and hit the damn wall. It got, it's getting old, I know that. They gave me a pretty good call today. They fixed it pretty well for you after yeah. yesterday. Yeah, they really did. Um, you know, I feel like if we'd have just hung in there, we could have uh, left here with a decent finish, but we'll get him next time, bro. Okay, this part of the job stinks. Leaders on pit road. Everybody coming down, all those on the lead lap at least. Here's Jerry Punch. Well, you got a glimpse of how good this DuPont Chevy really could be when they wouldn't agree a moment ago. They told Jeff Gordon, go after him. Let's get to the halfway buddy. So Gordon punched the button and just drove right by the 99 cars. He's also in the pits. You were watching that. The X-Side uh, battery for Thunderbird. Now back to Jeff Gordon. You see him putting left side tires with the DuPont Chevrolet. Really cleaning the windshield. Look down pit road. The five car is down as Gordon is down and away. His teammate, likewise, Terry Labonte, is out. They scramble for turn one. And Dale Jarrett. Let's go to John Kruger, who's in the Earnhardt pits. It'll be a four tire change for Dale Earnhardt. They, Bobby Hutchins keeps telling me the car's getting closer to where we want it. They're doing just air pressure. They're going down air pressure off four tires. Left side's coming off. Also, Ernie Urban on pit road for four tires. Remember, he spun out. He did get hit from behind as Earnhardt leads pit road. Urban now getting left side tires. He did. He was hit from behind because the rear, right in the right corner of 
of his rear bumper, guys, there was a mark there, a little bit of a ding there, but it's nothing serious. Larry McRiddle says the car is okay. Well, they must have beat that quarterfinal back in because when I saw him go in the pits a moment ago, it looked like there was a sail hanging out there. I guess they right? took a sledgehammer and knocked it back in. That's where he was hit by Lake Speed. So the uh, pit stops being completed here under the seventh caution period of the day at the Trans-South Financial 400. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a moment. Back at Darlington Raceway, there's part of the sun-baked crowd here today. And boy, you just couldn't order better weather. I understand it rained Friday, Saturday, and Sunday all day last weekend. But boy, yesterday and today have just been magnificent with the temperature probably in the low 70s. Nice breeze, and it is great. Under caution flag, once again, Jimmy Spencer in the smoking Joe car. Down in turn one, made some contact with the wall. The wrecker had to go pick the car up, take it in the back to the garage area. There it is. On the hook. Bad scene there, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Boy, it's something you hate to see anybody have to have their car dragged in by the century record. Pace car comes down, and the lights are out, so we'll be going back to racing in one more lap. Here's Jerry Punch. See that sun beating down, and that sun really heats us up here in the pits, but it also heats up the gas cans. Let me show you what they have here in Jeff Gordon's pit. This is a cooling blanket. It really isn't plugged in. Actually, it's a reflecting blanket. It's to keep the gas can under here nice and cool. Now, the reason they use it for two reasons, Charlie Seeger's engine builder said, this blanket keeps the sun off the gas can, keeps the gas from expanding and coming out the overflow, thus they don't lose fuel. But also, cooler gas, cooler fuel makes more horsepower. That's why drag racers have coil inside an ice chest to keep their fuel cool to make more horsepower for more speed. Little trick of the trade here at Darlington to keep the gas nice and cool. We're down here in the 99 car pits for Jeff Burton. They have not touched his chassis all day. The car is running well. They just put four tires on it, filled it up with fuel. Speaking of tires, we're in the 99 pit. Look at these tires. These came from the 12 car, the Bobby Allison Ford machine. Right next to them, another set that came from the 77. Another Ford. They're about to go green coming off of turn four. Tire wars in the pits. Everybody trying to make a deal. Back upstairs, green flag out. Robert Presley is the leader. Sterling Marlin second, then Gordon, Bobby Labonte, and Bill Elliott. Now, Robert Presley had pitted during the last caution. When he got his lap back, he had nothing to lose. The tail end lead lap. He came in made a pit stop, so he stayed out there this time, did not make a pit stop. And so it's going to be a scramble back behind him. And Kyle Petty trying to get in front of the leader, which he does. Sterling Marlin, here he comes, trying to get a lap back. feels that this is uh, their opportunity. Sterling Marlin's running in second place. Actually, he didn't make a pit stop either. And uh, this is their opportunity to get a lap back, those that are that are one down, because Robert's tires are a little bit older than are some of the others. There have been eight different leaders and ten lead changes just past the halfway mark of this event. And Bobby Labonte cars running together. That's Mark Martin up ahead and Ted Musgrave behind. We've seen that a lot this year. Yep. Oh, boom. Boy, hard contact, huh? Man, oh, man. Somebody's supposed to slow in front of Mark Martin. As a matter of fact, they're still trying to get straight off the second corner. That's Mike Wallace on the right of your screen. He now gets back in line, but man, Mark really took a shot. He didn't have the world. He kept the spin the cars beyond me. It's Morgan Shepard in front of Mark Martin. I guess that's a car that slowed going down in turn one. Boy, we were lucky we didn't have a big chain reaction. Here it is. Watch Shepard. Jeremy Mayfield goes in the corner. together and Mark Martin was trying to avoid the wreck that was going to happen so he backed off the gasoline and Musgrave just nailed him. Ooh. Here it is from another angle. There you can see Mark checking up and he can uh, Musgrave gets hit by Earnhardt. Yeah he does. I mean, they, they were so close on each other they couldn't see him. And look at all the cars behind them trying to dodge. Hutch trick them down on the apron of the racetrack. 
Here it is from the in car. This is what we saw originally. Seven laps, ten lead changes. We have seven caution periods, total 34 laps, and the average speed over 120 miles an hour. Those that have led a lap picked up five bonus points. Gordon, Bobby Labonte, Jeff Burton, Presley, and Ward Burton. And also Jarrett, Dave Marcus, and Dale Earnhardt has led one lap. And our list of out of race is going to be pretty short. Only three. Hillen, John Andretti, and Ward Burton. John has an update on Robert Presley, who's setting the pace here. Well, I tell you, that's a pretty good car Robert's got out there. That car won two outside poles last year, Martinsville in April and New Hampshire in July. Andy Petrie decided to roll the dice because he said they only had seven green flag laps on that set of tires. And now they're at the front. Not bad for a team that, hey, what, about an hour ago was almost two laps down? They're really pumped up back here. And Presley, of course, won the Bush race in the spring of 1992 and 93 to become the only driver to win back-to-back -back Bush races. 29 car, we understand, is beginning to show a little smoke. He's on the inside of Kenny Wallace as he comes off the second corner, right directly in front of Dale Jarrett. up in front of him because Press is at the ball. The leader spinning in turn three. Nobody else is going to be involved, but just a lot of smoke coming from that car. And the caution flag is out. Oh, these blowing tires. And it's a flip down. And Robert, stop, stop, stop. Stop, Robert. He's trying to. There's something in the dry shaft or the, something that's falling out of it. Oh, what a tough break. He's going to get out of the car. There he is. He's okay. This is what happened up in three. Well, it just goes in there, and it looks like a tire might have gone down or something happened that he broke traction. The rear just went out from under him, into the wall he went, and a lot of close calls as everybody tried to maneuver by. Boy, Bill Elliott and Dale Jarrett way down on the bottom of the racetrack, the apron of the track to get around Presley, whose car is now stopped here just shy of the start-finish line. And there's Robert. Out of the car, okay, but a tough break. He was the leader of this race. It brings out our eighth caution of the day here at Darlington. Presley was leading the race and then this incident that has put the car on the hook headed back to the garage area Robert Presley out of competition this is what happened as he went into three just riding along there not too close to anyone else Jeff Gordon was right behind him, but all of a sudden the back end just breaks loose and he shoots up into the outside wall comes back down across the track tries to get it righted as other cars take evasive action now he's trying to get the car going again. Look at all the smoke as he tries to get the car back up to speed. And about right here, we're going to see a brake rotor fly up under the car. Watch. There's a rotor sliding on the ground. There it starts dancing across the racetrack. That's half a brake rotor. We made contact with the wall. Then a little bit of fire from underneath the car, but it quickly burned itself out. And I was yelling for him to stop, stop. He had no brakes. No he, wonder he didn't stop. He didn't have any brakes. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt has some damage on the front of his car from when he hit Ted Musgrave a few laps ago after Musgrave hit Mark Martin in a chain reaction incident. And we might tell you also that Kyle Petty got a lap back during this caution period as he was running ahead of Robert Presley when the caution came out. There's the damage to Dale Earnhardt's left nose. 
And the brake rotor that uh, fell out of Presley's car, well, they kicked it over to the wall because it was a little too hot to handle by hand. We'll take another break here while we are still under caution from the Trans South Financial 400. Jeff Gordon now leads. ESPN Speed World coverage of the Trans South Financial 400 being brought to you by the more than 1,250 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. And by Budweiser, the official sponsor of the 1996 Summer Games. This Bud's for you. Here's John Kernan with Robert Presley. Well, Robert, right now is talking to Andy Petrie and... Uh, Robert, you were out there in front, but all of a sudden, what happened? The car broke loose with the tire? What? No, we uh, lost the motor there going in three. You know, uh, I didn't know what it was. I, whenever I started off in there, it just went real quick. And what much we could do, you know, I got handed to Andy and all these guys. You know, we had a bad race car at the start, and made up two laps there. And, you know, we weren't going to win this thing, I don't think, but we was going to get us a top five. But we'll go back to Bristol. All right, that's Robert Presley, Bob. Everybody looking toward Bristol next weekend. We will be there, but we've got the Trans-South Financial 400 to wrap up for you, and we'll be back to continue our coverage in just a moment. Pace car pulls off. Yeah, I see it down there, David, but it's down on the light part. We'll open yeah, up the rain. Going green this time. Okay. Looks like a couple of these guys are going to try to get their lap back, so be on your toes. in last year's race, and that set a record for Darlington. Dallenbach's Ford is limping toward his pit area and now back into the garage area. No pit stops being made. The ch track is being checked for debris up in the third turn, so we have another opportunity to get a break in here under caution at Darlington, South Carolina. car on 
on ESPN continues next weekend at Bristol, Tennessee, with qualifying on Friday at 9.30. The Goodies 250 at 2 o'clock next Saturday afternoon. NASCAR today at 12.30 Sunday. And then at 1 o'clock next Sunday afternoon, the Food City 500. And with the exception of Easter weekend, we will have a race for you now every Sunday afternoon through the 1st of May when we go to Sonoma. We are still under caution as debris is still being picked up on the racetrack. So again, we get in another commercial break. Stay with us. Trans-South Financial 400, and everybody has his favor. There's a Dale Earnhardt fan. And Dale Earnhardt, we talked about a moment ago, has some damage on the nose of the car when he ran in the back of uh, Musgrave, Ted Musgrave. And John Turner said he talked to the crew back on the back, and Earnhardt said, don't fix it. It just might help the car. Ned, what would he talk about? Well, it could, uh, as far as the aerodynamics is concerned, maybe put a little more down pressure on the, the front end, something he might have needed there. So... I mean, if the car is pushing and they get more downforce on the nose of the car, that will make the car looser. We'll listen for the restarts again. Okay, Steve, get ready. Going green this time. Musgrave going into that turn. So Ernie Irving going on the inside of the Texaco Havlin car. He made pit stops all during that last caution flag. So the defending champion of this race is out front, Sterling Marlin. One here a year ago. He and Jeff Gordon are pulling away. Yep. And I got to say hello to Hattie Mae McClure, you know, Larry and all the McClure boys along. She broke her foot this week up at Gavin to Virginia, and that's bad news for the boys. That means that she will be fixing biscuits and gravy next weekend. Oh, boy, that is bad news. Mm. Ram Field summary for you, where your favorite driver is running at the moment. It'll show you that there are 17 cars on the lead lap. Johnny Minson, the last car on the lead lap. As now the battle for the front spot becomes a little bit closer as Gordon comes in on Marlin. Against the wall there in the front stretch. 
you to look like. I hate that my finger between he and the wall. Bobby Labonte coming to the inside or looking to the inside of Elton Sawyer in the back stretch. Not able to make the pass though. Here's Musgrave and Kenny Wallace side by side. Now Jeff Bodine trying to get to the inside of Morgan Shepard as Dale Earnhardt looks on. Morgan tries to get on the inside of Musgrave. Musgrave backs off in one. That's for 10th position. Ooh, they get off the close again. Morgan Shepard is having his best run of the uh, year so far. His finishes have all been in the 30s in the first four races of this year. 30th, 31st, 32nd, 37th. But he's in the top 10. Had a good qualifying run here in the Remington Arms Ford. Here's what happened a couple of laps ago that stacked everybody up so badly. This is from inside Ted Musgrave's Family Channel car. He goes up. That's Rusty Wallace. A little bit of contact. Gets Rusty a little bit loose. Rusty has to back out of the gas. And when that happens, they start stacking up behind him, just like the expressway. Only they're running 170, 80 miles an hour instead of 50 or 60 miles per hour. and the damage to it that we were talking about earlier. Caused when he had a slight, well, looks like more than a slight uh, bump with Ted Musgrave a while ago. And they're still running together. is using a much higher line than uh, Marlin is. And this car right behind them, Hutch Strickland, he's one lap down, but he is catching those front cars. He's hoping that Gordon doesn't get around the four car because he feels he's faster. Gordon might be faster than the four car, too, but he hasn't been able to get around. So he's about to get up there and try to pass both of them. He has caught them. But being shown in the 18th position. You look out high. Mm -hmm. that Gordon is going up in the first and second corner, and he's losing time, too. Meanwhile, we have a change for 12th position as Bobby Hamilton passed Dale Earnhardt. Steve Grissom in the pits on the back stretch. A wacky racing car coming to a stop. John Kernan, he's right there in front of you. The hood pins come out, the hood will go up. I noticed the lap before this coming out of turn two, a lot of smoke coming out of Grissom's car. It looks like an well, overheating right problem, there. isn't it? There you, go by the That's, you hear Steve telling hey, you to make sure you clean the windshield. You see water going into the radiator, an overheating problem for Grissom. I don't see a lot of buildup of rubber on the front grill, though. Now they're getting some tape out. Apparently also uh, some other problems for Grissom. Is it, boy, it is taking forever to get water down, into this. Oh. And you heard him say the temperature come down any, and Steve said nope. <laughs> he was in 20th position, but loses laps now on pit road as Dale Jarrett, Terry Labonte, and Ward Burton. Six, seven, and eight. Yeah, Jarrett's having a hard time holding Terry Labonte off right now. He seems to be getting through turns three and four pretty good, but turn number two is, is getting him over there. 
Bobby Hamilton on the move goes by Ted Musgrave. Now Bobby Hamilton is one of those drivers that made a pit stop on that last caution when the other leaders didn't. He was back towards the back, so he has some pressure tires on there. Mark Martin and a couple of those, those drivers made pit stops. It is said you can't win from the back stretch at Darlington, but Sterling Marlin may prove him wrong here today. He's on the back stretch and is the leader of the race right now and holding off the challenge of Jeff Gordon. Well, Jeff Gordon a couple of laps ago went extremely high, about like that, down in one and two. And remember a few years ago, and Earnhardt went down there and brushed the wall. You don't want to play around too high in one and two. 100 laps to go. Start one more pit stop. Marlin started 33rd. Lola Starlin Darlington. The more start than anyone has won here in Darlington is like, oh, is he going? Oh. Gordon is going to go up and try him on the outside for a second. Moments to go on the back stretch. Let's take a look at what happened. Er Ernie, Ernie Irvin and Jeff Bodine were bumping fenders. And there's some smoke coming out of the, the 28 car. Now the yeah. fender is rubbing the tire on the 28 car. Ernie will have to be awfully careful. You see Terry Labonte, the Kellogg's car, right on the back bumper of Dale Jarrett. Yep. Nope. And Gordon now challenges Marlin. I really think Jeff Gordon is faster. But you got to pass him before you can show. Darrell Walton still out there. Darrell was many, many laps down. 57 laps down, as a matter of fact, in 36th position. Man, oh man, looks like Gordon's going to go back to the wall. Once again, he tries to get on the inside. He may have a run. Yep, he's got it. Gordon comes to the lead. And Jerry has an update on Jeff Gordon, who's finally back up front, Jerry. Well, Bobby is, but the car has a terrible push in it. This asked Roy Everton, why is he riding up at the very top of the racetrack? You see him down a turn one or two, maybe just a couple of feet at most from that outside of the table wall and a Darlington stripe and race it. Well, our car is such a bad push in it. He can keep from binding the car up by letting the car go all the way up across the racetrack. It keeps our speed up, but uh, we hope he doesn't bang off anything up there. Right now, the car just will not turn at all in the corner. Well, he's pulling away from Sterling Marlin at the moment, and as you saw on the scoring pylon, the five car went into sixth position, passing Dale Jarrett. And here they are coming down off the fourth corner. There's Ken Schrader, whose car is damaged early on. However, he's only eight laps down in 30th position. I'll show you what happened to Terry Labonte and Dale Jarrett just a moment ago. Jarrett goes in turn three, drifts the car just a little bit high. Terry Labonte gets a great run and just made it look easy. You see Jeff Burton back there in the 99 car, the car on the right side of your screen. He was running second member of the uh, pit stop and uh, evidently had some trouble in the pits. He went back to about 10th or 12th. Yeah, he was uh, 11th, I think, Benny, when he came back out, but now he has worked his way back up to the 8th position. Hot Strickland still trying to get past Sterling Marlin, but unable to do so, and so it is Jeff Gordon, Sterling Marlin, Ricky Craven running in 3rd position, 4th is Bobby Labonte, and 5th is Bill Elliott after 200 of the 293 laps. Back with more in just a moment. Just as we went to break, the caution came out. Ernie Irvin blew a tire. Pit stops underway. Ricky Craven gets out at 18.8 seconds. We're watching Jeff Gordon at the top and Bobby Labonte at the bottom. Now Gordon is out at 18.8 and Labonte in 21 -0. And Sterling Marlin is in the back pits. Here's John. It'll be a four-tire change for Sterling Marlin and Dale Earnhardt also in four tires. Right side going on now. The jack then swings around to the left side. Sterling still sitting here waiting. They're going around the left side on Dale Earnhardt. They made a minor chassis adjustment on the left rear. There goes Jeff Gordon and Ricky Craven. As now they're having a little bit of a problem. They're going just tight on the left rear. He's down and away. It looks like Earnhardt is going to beat the four car out of pit road. Sterling Marlin has that pit 
system. But once again, we keep talking about the disadvantage of the back pits. This points out the disadvantage. All the cars on the lead left pitted on the front. Sterling had to pit on the back. He was running the pits, running second. He will come out of the pits running about 15. And there are the other cars that are on the back stretch, pitted on the back stretch, catching up to the lead line. And so that's where Dale Earnhardt, Sterling Marlin, and the others will fall into position. We'll take another break and be back with more in just a moment at Darlington. coming off corner number two still under caution you can see the back pits there and most of the back pits are clear of any cars couple one coming out one coming in field getting relined for a restart Joe, Nem Joe Nemechek beating the pace car as he goes out exits pits on the back stretch I'm sorry go right ahead I was just gonna say the reason for this caution is because Ernie Irvin had a problem uh, resulting in a Higher going down, and uh, John Kernan is standing by with him. Well, what a disappointed person. This must be Ernie. You guys fought your way. You were having a great run, and then a little bit of a problem. Uh, fender rubbing on the, the tire. Is that what finally happened to the tire blue? Yeah, yeah, I got in, uh, touched the seven car uh, one time coming off turn two, and um, my fender started rubbing. And, uh, hey, you know, we, 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 we knew it would pick up a push, but um, just hadn't, hadn't actually committed to coming in yet. What? Now, Ernie, what happened in the, the earlier incident? Um, I, I, somebody spun, and um, there was a... Which one you want to talk about? I'm talking about the one where you spun, didn't hit anything, apparently. And you, you got turned around, I guess, in uh, four. Yeah, I mean, uh, people checked up in front of me, and I checked up, and uh, somebody running in the back of me spun me, and I was just real lucky I didn't hit nothing. Well, Ernie Irvin's watching as they work on his car when he came in. Uh, no brakes, guys, so they, uh, they're going to go to work on it and maybe see if they can get him back out there. What happens when these cars hit the wall, they break the rotor. You know, we, we saw that a moment ago on the, on the 33 car. And here we see, look at the, at Sterling Marlin. He came in second and went out 13th. Once again, he's pitted on the backstretch. All the rest of these cars are pitted on the rotor. There's a brake rotor up, the, up by the wheel. As a matter of fact, we can have this picture in about 10 minutes. We'll show you a red rotor when they use the brakes and you did with the rotor from the rest of them. They do use a lot of brakes here at Darwin. That's Morgan Shepard's car. Now, once again, we get set for a restart. Restart will come on lap number 207. 293 make up the distance. Crowd is ready. And the green flag is out. 16 cars. for third. And here comes Bobby Labonte. He's alongside Bill Elliott. We might put another Labonte in the top five. We do. Elliott back to fifth. Boy, it's been a great run for Bill Elliott. 
it, though, considering what he faced when uh, they got at about 11.45 this morning and decided they needed to change an engine before 1 o'clock. He stayed up in the top 10 almost all afternoon. Now begins to fade just a little bit as Jeff Burton has passed Dale Earnhardt to take up, take up the uh, 12th position. by Rusty Wallace, puts him in the sixth spot. Rusty seventh, Morgan Shepard eighth, Bobby Hamilton is ninth, and Dale Jarrett is now tenth. See the Jack Roush cars running together there. Still, they've been running together almost all afternoon, it seems. Martin and Musgrave. And now, Jeff Burton. Ricky Rudd to 10, the tide car, another car that just missed the setup here at Drawing from this afternoon, he and Earnhardt. We've got three Roush cars in the top 11, and we have two Henry cars in the top three. Yes, first and third. And so there is something to be said for multi-star teams. You get a better chance of having more up there, doesn't it? Yep. Chevy's leading the way here. Hamilton's Pontiac back in ninth. And that's Strickland. Let's mark Martin go. Now we see if Jeff Burton can get alongside. He can. Remember 20 years ago today, Benny, when you and uh, David Pearson were. Uh, Racing together with 17 laps to go. Yeah, what happened? Pearson beat me, right? <laughs> well, you both crashed hard into the oh, that time. first yeah. turn wall. I thought you'd recall that. <laughs> I remember that time. <laughs> we, we also uh, heard that you were quoted as saying, quote, wasn't going to back off for anybody. That's close. <laughs> Maybe I should have. <laughs> In retrospect. In retrospect, yes. Could not make it. Earnhardt in the three, Sterling Marlin in the four, it's Ricky Rudd in the ten. Morgan Shepard is having a great day. He's running in ninth position. He was eighth just a couple of laps ago. Bobby Hamilton drove by the STP car. Now Dale Jarrett's about to drive by. That could just be it. I will tell you that Jeff Gordon has clinched the most the five points for leading the most laps today. Just pulling away right now, folks. That's the reason we're not on here. There's much better action going on back in the pack. Again, the Wallace brothers are running together. Rusty leading Kenny. Of course, Kenny's a lap down. He's being shown in the 18th position. One lap down. Rusty in the 7th position. Jeff Gordon, meanwhile, is pulling away from second place Ricky Craven. How do we know? Well, our AutoZone on-track interval will tell us. We time lap 2.12 through 2.16. On lap 2.12, Gordon had a one-second advantage on Ricky, and it's doubled, more than doubled, to 2.1 on lap 2.16, and Joe Nemechek has crashed. On well, turn two, he's in the wall, and back in the fence with the left rear. Let's the car roll down, and caution flag once again waves here at the Darling Raceway. 11 cautions so far today. This one coming out on lap 219, and the Burger King car took a whopper of a hit there on the left rear. Huh? He's trying to get to pit road, and he does make it. Let's see if we can tell what happened. He's on the inside of Dave Marcus. Yep. I don't know if there was contact or just the air off the spoiler, whatever, but they batch in the fence now. Nick, can he go the rest of the way after this stop? I doubt it. I don't much think so, Vinny. 
that they're going to make pit stops anyway because they like the feel of those fresh tires. Joe Dietschek was one of those drivers that was only one lap down before his uh, crash there. So tough break for it. Let's go to the pits and Bill Elliott. I mean, Bill <laughs> Weber. Weber, okay. <laughs> Bill, I promoted you there. And Ricky Craven rolls into the Kodiak Chevrolet. Remember, he told us on NASCAR today they tried an experimental setup on his push car yesterday. It ran so well, they put it on this car. He's having a great run. Four tires and fuel. Yes, just went to Jerry Punch. Right side tires are already on our leader, Jeff Gordon's car. They almost decided not to fit. Not sure they can make it. And left side tires on. They're going to be very, very close. As the 41 and 5 also. As the 24 now headed down. The quickest pick stop once again was Jeff Gordon at 18.5 seconds. It's a four-tire change for Dale Earnhardt, also Sterling Marlin. Er Earnhardt's crew banged on the spoiler. The car's still just a little too tight. They're also going to make a track bar adjustment, trying to loosen the car up. Left side's rolling on. Dale Earnhardt's car left side's on Sterling Marlin. They drop the deck. Sterling is down. So is Earnhardt. It looks like Sterling is going to beat Earnhardt to the line as they exit through the backstretch pits. But look at all the other cars from the front stretch you go by. Yep, they have already gone by. Here comes Kyle Petty out of the pit, following Dale Earnhardt. Our Briggs and Stratton roof cam showing us the view that Kyle has. Well, can they go the rest of the way? You guys don't think so, huh? Clear. Clear. 73 laps. That's going to be stretching it. Uh, yeah, it'll, be, it'll really be stretching it, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's someone who will do it. Jerry, what do your people down there say? Well, I just asked Ray Everett, and I said, you guys can't make it according to what I'm calculating. Ray just sort of smiles and says, well, Doc, I'm afraid to tell you, yes, we can. We can make it the rest of the way. So, uh, yeah, but, but he just decided to go back and recalculate, so we're going to check again <laughs> after he told me he was dead for sure they could make it the rest of the way. Now, Bobby Labonte did go 70 laps a little longer. Okay, so it's possible we'll be back to resume this race and finish up the Trans-South 400 in just a moment. Stay with us. coverage of the Trans-South Financial 400 is being brought to you by Quaker State, the motor oil that exceeds the highest standards for engine protection. By Firestone, America's tire since 1900. And by Craftsman, a line of 2200 hand tools made in America, guaranteed forever, only at Sears. Well, we're going to go green next time, I guess, huh? Yep, they got that one lap signal, so they start the double foul restart. And get up there to in double foul for the restart. Don't you love these Sunday afternoons when you're trying to figure out with about 70 laps to go who's going to win, who can make it the rest of the way, who's got to stop? I can't think of a better way to spend a Sunday. Neither can I. <laughs> we're going to turn off the radios here and... Uh, you let us go first.
grand field summary. 16 cars on the lead lap. And Bill has more on the great run by Ricky Craven, who's within a car length of the lead, Bill. And what a day it's been for Craven and this entire crew practicing pit stops till 10 o'clock at night. Nobody in this whole pit road look works any harder than these guys because Craven makes them do it. He stays and watches them. trying to rope in Gordon. They really think they've got a chance at Craven's first Winston Cup win down here in a car that he almost took the victory lane earlier this year at Rockingham. Yeah, he finished third in that Rockingham race, and he's never finished outside the top 20 so far this year. His Daytona finish was 13th, then the third at Rockingham, a 17th at Richmond, and the most recent race he finished 12th at Atlanta. Petty was a lap down, but he's back on the lead lap now, and in fact, in 15th position. Yeah, he got uh, back in the, on the lead lap when Robert Presley had his problems. He was running out in front of Robert, and uh, so he got back in the lead lap. That was a good run. Trying to take four turns. Earnhardt just blew Earnhardt away, going down in turn three, but here comes Earnhardt trying to come back. He said, okay, Kyle, I'll catch him the block this time. Kyle, good job. Let's get some more of them. <laughs> Cheerleaders. Yep. Yep. Here's Ted Musgrave to the inside of Terry Labonte, and Musgrave goes to fifth. How about that? Evidently, Terry Labonte's tires not matched up exactly right this time. Or either they made some adjustments on Musgrave, and he's taking off. Here's Dale Jarrett coming up on Terry Labonte. Now, Labonte's got some problems, yeah. Ned. Yeah, I think yeah. you're right. Man. Jarrett blows him away there in the fourth turn. That was for the sixth position. Mm -hmm. Mark Martin's bumper cam. Meanwhile, for seventh position, we have a battle between the 94 of Elliott and the 43 of Bobby Hamilton. There they are. Elliott has the position, but Hamilton trying to take it away. You can see that's the eighth spot Elliott is running. Ted Musgrave has caught Rusty Wallace. And Rusty ran up on some traffic the lap before, but we still got this lap going on. Bill Elliott has won five times at this racetrack. This race twice in the Southern 500 three times. Most recent victory was in 1994. And I'll tell you that Jeff Gordon has pulled out about a second lead on Ricky Craven. Just to keep you abreast of what the leader is doing. Dale Jarrett just took Ted Musgrave between turns three and four and took over the field. Jarrett now sets his sights on the Rusty Wallace car in fourth. Jeff Burton inside of Morgan Shepard, and there's passing going on everywhere. Evidently, Morgan got the car really pushing on loose off the second quarter because the 99 car of Jeff Burton just blew by, and that's 11th spot. 
Well, we're getting close to the end of the race. If you have anything left, it's time to do it now. Gordon with about a four-tenths of a second advantage on second place Craven. Well, it hasn't the distance between Gordon and Craven hasn't lessened. I guess I just was a little optimistic for that second lead a moment ago. About 5.4 seconds between first and fifth. Hey, there's that camera, Benny. There's the brake rubber, the red thing. It's the brake rubber. When he goes in the corner, now he comes off the and accelerates down the straightaway. We'll see it cools off. Then he'll brake about right here to get in the corner. And the rotor will turn sherry red. Martinsville, those things will stay red all the time, but here you have enough of a straightaway that they cool off for a few seconds. And see where his braking points are going into the corner, then about halfway through, the brakes come off and the accelerator goes to the floor. And look at that suspension go up and down. That spring in that car is about, uh, oh, ten times heavier than the spring that you would have in your car, your private car, to be able to take the abuse. And, and the shock absorbers were even get some abuse, too. They keep it from bouncing more. And this is a very smooth racetrack. It was just repaved prior to last year. And looking here, Michael Walter from traffic, and Ricky Craven is gaining on Jeff Gordon. Walter, who is in 30th position, 12 laps down after an incident early in the race. There's the separation between first and second. It's just a matter of car lengths. And Ricky Craven, last year's Rookie of the Year, has never won. Jeff Gordon is the leader, and here is Sterling Marlin going for another position, passing Bill Elliott. And Jeff Burton also goes alongside Elliott and by Bill Elliott. 8th, ninth, and 10th there. Marlon now 8th. Jeff Burton ninth, and Bill Elliott is 10th. And Bill Elliott's car is definitely not running as good as it was earlier. He's, he's dropping back. He's just uh, having some a little bit of a handling problem. And uh, there's a slower car up there in front of Jeff. That's Dick Trickle, the 19 car. So Gordon and Craven are up to get by without too much trouble. Well, coming up next here on ESPN, after the conclusion of our race, the LPGA Standard Register Ping final round. Defending champion Laura Davies showed her power on the course by leading the tournament in the first round through the final one. And you'll see the end of this year's coming up right after our coverage from Phoenix, Arizona. Morgan Shepard in the 75, Bill Elliott, 94. And we see Shepard trying his best to catch the 43 car of Hamilton. It's 10th and 11th. Hamilton is 10th. Shepard is 11th. Schrader moves over, lets both of them go by. And so the battles are everywhere on the racetrack, but at the moment it's Jeff Gordon leading over Ricky Craven, Bobby Labonte, Dale Jarrett, and Rusty Wallace. driven by defending NASCAR Winston Cup champion Jeff Gordon is leading at the Trans-South Financial 400 here at Darlington, South Carolina. For those of you just joining us, Jeff Gordon has led 149 laps. He has won the Richmond race, finished third at Atlanta two weeks ago, but got off to a very rocky start in 96, finishing 42nd at Daytona and 40th at Rockingham. But he has really together here in the last three goings. As a matter of fact, after Rockingham, he was 43rd in the point stand. The defending champion was, in fact, 43rd in point stand. And he went into this race in 16th in the point standings. And so if he keeps up this pace, he's going to move into the top 10 before very long. Yes, if the points were awarded right now, he jumped up to 8th place. Yep. But we aren't awarding points until the race is over. But uh, he certainly has 
Made some great strides. And you can see there, Ned, that he's opened up the advantage on Ricky Craven by quite a bit. Yes, he has. It was just a few car lengths, of, I don't know, three or four laps ago, and now it's 25, 30 car lengths. And 88, the Hill Jarrett just drove by Bobby Labonte, took over that third spot. So Jarrett moves up to third spot now. They uh, make some good adjustments on his Ford, it looks like. He was eight when he came out of the pits this last time around. The 43 of Bobby Hamilton is losing ground. There's still 16 cars on the lead lap, and Dale Earnhardt is the last of those 16. Bobby Hamilton, and I think Hamilton is back at about 15th spot at the moment. Now, the only question is how many of these cars have to stop for fuel? Maybe they can all make it, but still 70 laps is a pretty good distance for these cars to go without stopping for fuel. Yeah, I think it was 73, wasn't it, when, uh, when we were doing that calculation? Calculations going on, Bill. Well, that's exactly what they're doing in Ricky Cravens. They're trying to figure out if they can make it to the end. And uh, it's going to be very, very close. They're actually doing the math now, trying to figure out if they can reach that checkered flag. But I'll tell you, the season these guys are having, the way they're running today, if it doesn't make it, it's not stopping. I don't, I'll tell you that. It's not stopping. Uh, this race is going to end with a checkered flag or out of gas for Ricky Craven, unless there's a caution. Down pit road to Jerry Pons. Well, the good news for Dale Jarrett is the car is driving about as good as it has all day long. They did make an air pressure adjustment. They also took one round of bite, or one round of uh, actually rear end bite out of the car on that last pit stop. The bad news is that Dale Jarrett cannot make it the rest of the way on fuel, according to Todd Parrott. I think with Todd Parrott, also check with Mike Beam on Bill Elliott. Neither one of those cars, according to their crew chiefs, can make it. Now, Rusty Wallace's crew told me a moment ago they're going to be very, very close. Let's check in over in the back pit with, uh, on the car number four with John Turner. I talked to Tony Glover before they went back to green and asked Tony if they could make it. Tony said, nope, there's no way. Sterling Martin driving his heart out now, trying to get to the front, but it's almost like hitting your head against the wall, though sometimes, hey, the wall cares. But Tony says they can't make it. One car back here that can that is still on the lead lap is Dale Earnhardt. David Smith says the car pushes so bad that Earnhardt it cannot get onto the accelerator. Therefore, they can make it easily. But Earnhardt told him, hey, I hope I don't have to drive that many laps on one set of tires. <laughs> and John, if this thing stays green the rest of the way, Dale Earnhardt will come close to going a lap down. As a matter of fact, I believe Jeff Gordon, that pace he's running now, and the pace Earnhardt is running, that he will put him a lap down. Another Franfield summary riding with uh, Morgan Shepard here as he's closing in on the ninth place car of Sterling Marlin. Don't go away, folks. This one is going to come down to a matter of fuel mileage. And for those of you who have tuned in to see the final round of the standard register ping LPGA, don't go away because right after our race is over, we'll be switching to Phoenix for that final round. Crystal Parker Gregory, nine under going in after three rounds. And the defending champion, Laura Davies, was six under par. So stay with us right after our conclusion. We'll be switching you to the LPGA in Phoenix. IndyCar Racing Phoenix also today, the IRL. RPM tonight has the uh, rundown on that tonight. Hey, Kyle Petty is showing strength here. Yeah, Mark Martin came up on uh, the 90 car there, had to back off. Kyle took advantage there, of it, swam right up there, but he could quite make the pass. He had all four down on the apron. Good try, buddy, good try. finish of 1996 he finished 11th at Rockingham he's currently running 13th but the 12th place car of Mark Martin is just ahead of him and here is Morgan Shepard driving to the inside of Marlin wow he just drove right down there drove around him and drove right in front oh Kyle made yeah. that pass too that's a good job Kyle 
to 12th now. Here's Bill Weber. Well, Ricky Craven's great day may be ending a little early. They're not sure. They may have a problem in the motor department. They definitely do. He just went by maybe a valve spring. They just had a big team meeting down here and a, and a powwow on it. And if they were going to pit and how they were going to do it. But uh, Craven's 41 car sounds off song. And uh, there'll be no victory today for Ricky Craven. Wow, that is a shame. That's too bad. He has driven his heart out. as close as you can come to a victory without getting one. And Bill Weber has more. Well, hang on. Don't cancel the party <laughs> yet. They just told me it cleaned itself up. He just went by. It sounds good. So maybe something in the carburetor. They're not sure. Craven says we're good to go. So hang on. you got to stand at the end of these races. You can't leave early, That's man. That's right. Hey, Bill, don't take the shade while you're hallucinating down there. Benny, they won't <laughs> let me leave this pit. Oh, okay. told me when I came down here, you're staying. Because every time we come down here, they get to the front. So we're <laughs> staying here. Okay. Now, when Dale Jarrett moved up into third place around Bobby Labonte, he was running about five seconds behind to Ricky Craven. He has cut that down now to about two and a half seconds. So I'm sure that some of those, when uh, Ricky's car was not running up to speed, was hard off that. We've got 33 laps to go in the Grand South Financial 400 at Darlington. It's Gordon, Craven, Jarrett, Labonte, and Wallace. Jeff Gordon continues to lead here at Darlington as the laps continue to wind down. NASCAR Online at www.nascar.com will bring you the same real-time electronic timing and scoring that Winston Cup Series officials use to monitor the races. You can even send them some email and tell them what's on your mind. NASCAR Online, www.nascar.com. Uh, has had a very good afternoon after starting uh, well he didn't start completely last but he was the slowest qualifier to make the field everybody else took provision started he still is in the lead lap and he was a lap down one time and he got back in the lead lap by outrunning the leaders back to a caution so he's done a great job 16th right now the 24 car and Dale Jarrett, the leader of the race, Jeff Gordon, the 24, and Dale Jarrett, 88. That's the, the spread, the difference between first and second, 4.51 seconds. And we'll check that and see if Dale Jarrett is, in fact, gaining a little bit on Jeff Gordon. Yeah, I can tell you for a fact that he is, Benny, because uh, a little while ago, he was eight seconds behind wow. Jeff Gordon. So he's definitely, I would guess that Jeff Gordon is riding a good, smooth, there right now. He has a big lead. He don't need to be taking any chances. Now, Dale Jarrett is definitely mowing down Ricky Craven. He's not far behind him. That 4.62 seconds is behind the leader, not behind the second place. Yeah, Jarrett is definitely catching up to Ricky Craven. And Jeff Gordon in 1995 led in 11 of the 30, 31 races, led the most laps. There we see the leader. There comes Ricky Craven. There comes Dale Jarrett. But as Jerry Punch says, Dale Jarrett can't make it on gas. That's going to be the uh, problem for many drivers, perhaps. Yeah, you better hope that nobody else can either. Exactly. <laughs> Ricky Craven will hold this 
just a little bit long enough to give him some breathing room. But I predict they will pass him right here between turns three and four. And Musgrave and Labonte are still battling. Now, he did get it down there, Dan. Is he going to do it here? <laughs> where he will make the pass. Maybe this coming lap, huh? Well, maybe not. Why not? There it is. Jarrett to second. Craven back to third. And at the same time, Terry Labonte and Ted Musgrave slug it out on the track, and Labonte has six. Two laps to go. So Ricky Craven now drops to third position. His next problem is going to be Bobby Labonte, who is running in fourth. We'll see what the separation between those two is. It's well, yes. Yeah, it is. Now what are they calculating down there? Well, I'll tell you, they're calculating for Western Auto Mechanical. The race is already completed, and Jimmy Maycar is the winner. A fine run for Bobby Labonte today. He qualified 11th, still running up front, currently fourth on the leaderboard here. And I'll tell you, they've had a big day because the only other two times they've raced this car, they got wrecked. Once at Phoenix, once at Rockingham. So Bobby Labonte coming on strong here, and Jimmy Maycar, the Western Auto Mechanic of the race, is 24 down the front stretch and they head back into one Bob. Trying to put a lap on him and happy birthday to Jimmy McCarthy right. today. <laughs> and that's a nice uh, award for him on his birthday. And Dale Earth is about to go a lap down as Jeff Gordon is right on his back bumper. Alright Jerry, you're monitoring the transmissions from Jeff Gordon. What do you hear down there? Everham told me they could make it on fuel and they were very comfortable with that. Well, I'm not sure they're very comfortable. His calculations, as you watch him now make the move, try to make the move inside of Earnhardt, the calculations were they could go 74 laps. They have to go 73. Now, what Ray has told Jeff about 10 laps to go is, can you run any easier? Can you just get a nice, comfortable line and run easy? The 88 car is coming, but I don't think the 88 car can make it. And Jeff said, if I run any easier, I'm going to smack the wall. This car is the most comfortable when I run in the corner hard. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, you can't run it much easier because that 88 car <laughs> is coming. That is right. And here is Gordon now indeed putting a lap on 16th place, Dale Earnhardt. And Morgan Shepard has picked up to 7th spot. No, make that 8. Make that 8. And we see Dale Earnhardt trying to get back on the inside. And Dale Jarrett is right there. Yes, he is. They're separated now by only car length. And he was 5 seconds behind. Not too many laps to go. Earnhardt's going to move to the inside, let him go by on the outside. And there you can see it's less than a second, Ned, and really less than that now as, her, as uh, Jarrett continues to close in. 17 laps to go. Maybe they just figured it was going to hurt his car. And as hard as he's been driving that Ford, you know that he's using a lot of fuel. <laughs> and the 99 car is coming to pit road. Jeff Burton could make it. He's on pit road, so is this the first of many? He relinquishes 10th position to make a final splash and go. Oh, maybe some tires. Yeah, tires yeah, on the right side. I'd say this far back, they'll definitely put at least right side tires on. If you get within the last 10 laps, they probably would only take fuel off. Hey, they're going all four. All four tires. Wow. Now, they're thinking the best thing that could happen for us if they go a lap down. I start to say the best thing that could happen if they could get a caution flag. They'd have new tires and everybody else would have to get. But, but they're going to go a lap down. So that wouldn't really play. Now, Jarrett within just one or two car lengths. And Bobby Hamilton goes a lap down. Let's look at Dale Jarrett here in the fourth corner. Gets down on the apron. Onto the straightaway at the line. But, uh, boy, Dale is right there knocking on the door. The work goes a little high. Here comes Jared. a little low. But he can't do it there. Coming up on some heavy traffic. There's Lake Speed directly in front of Jeff Gordon. Lake goes up the hill. Here comes Jared on the inside. He's low right by. Yes. Dale Jarrett has passed Jeff Gordon in the fourth corner and taken the lead with 14 laps to go. Bring that car to the manufacturer, a gallon of gas, and found in. I can't imagine. He's 
anybody who's pitching the full board, so he's got to be using a lot of gas. But still, Lake Speed is directly in front of him, and they're still jammed up in some heavy traffic. Brett Bodine on the bottom of the Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse. His car is blown up. He's been black flagged by NASCAR. Lake Speed moves up and lets the leaders go by. Yep, he sure does. with 13 laps make that 12 laps and a half to go and again those of you tuning in for the LPGA stand by in a little more than 13 laps you'll be there here's Jerry about 15 laps to go Todd Parrott Dale Jarrett crew chief said Dale we cannot make it on fuel let's go ahead and just run the daylights out of it go ahead and run down the 24 car and pass it now that he's passing Todd said I wonder let me read like this again. He went up and recalculated and he just radioed back to Dale and said, Dale, we're about three laps short according to my calculations. What do you want to do? You want to roll the dice and stay out there? Think about it and let me know in just a minute. <laughs> oh, you got to do it. You got to get that close. You got to roll the dice. Yep. There Johnny Benson goes a lap down. He's 13. I tend to go for it if it were me, would you? Yeah, yeah, I'd say go for it. Spoken like a true father. Yeah. <laughs> I tried it in 1993 Daytona 500, went for it, and came up two laps short. <laughs> you got to do it. You got to go for it. More than 10 laps to go now. The separation between first and second. Whoa, is just a little. And Bobby Labonte has caught the Ricky Craven car. They're batting for third. There they are. Craven in the 41 car. Left your screen. Bobby Labonte in the Interstate Battery Chevrolet. This fourth.
lap now. And there are less than five laps to go. Retro 9 is on pit road with a badly smoking engine. And here is Bobby Labonte taking the position from Craven. That's third. Put Labonte in third spot. And right in front of Labonte is Dale Jarrett. With four laps to go, the question remains, are they going to be able to go with the fuel? Bobby Labonte closing in on Dale Jarrett for second place. Now less than three laps to go. And Jarrett is out of the jet again. where Jeff Gordon has won the Trans South Financial 400 and it was interesting on the last couple of laps counting the number of cars that ran out of fuel and there were a lot of them. There were about five or six cars that ran out of gas there on the last couple of laps. Jeff Gordon finding his way to victory lane and once again we remind you the final round of the LPGA standard register ping coming up from Phoenix, Arizona in just a moment. Bobby Hamilton was one of those who ran out of gas and uh, looks like he's not going to be able to make it. His car is almost stopped at the entrance to the pit area and the seven car of Jeff Bodine blew a tire right at the finish line and uh, as you can see it's uh, torn up some body on the front end of that car, the right front. He crossed the start finish line, took the checkered flag and the right front tire blew all at the same time. <laughs> Here's Jerry Punch in our McDonald's Winter Circle interview. Well, he's trying to get his helmet unhooked here in the car so we he can hear us here, and they're still celebrating down here in Victory Lane, their McDonald's Winter Circle interview. Jeff Gordon, uh, what a gamble. Do you see Ray Hamperham coming and slap his hand? Now he's got the helmet off where he can hear us, and uh, Jeff, congratulations on a great effort. Somewhat of a gamble there on fuel. Oh, man, I tell you, uh, we had an awesome car all day today, and that was a long run there. We knew we could make it on gas. Uh, I didn't think the, the 88 could make it on gas. Hey, good job, man, good job. And so, uh, you know, we, we did gamble, but this car worked so good that I, I kept driving it too hard, and uh, I kind of wore my tires out there at the end, and, and Dale gave us a, a real fight, and when he got by me, I, I thought, you know, if they can go all the way, it was pretty much over, but, uh, you know, it looked like uh, uh, I, would, I could stay with him. I didn't know if I could beat him, but he got in the wall there a little bit around a lap car, and, uh, you know, I fought him from there on out, but uh, got to really thank DuPont Auto Mode Fish. It's good you had a, a great tire today. Uh, Quaker State Motor Oil, this is their second win uh, this year, so... We're, uh, we're real happy, we're proud, and uh, got to thank God. He was, he was certainly with me today. 
Jeff, a handful of cars run out of fuel in that last lap, including Dale Earnhardt. How much do you think you had left? I mean, Everham said it was going to be very, very close. Well, those guys are pretty accurate. Uh, you know, when uh, when they tell me something, I believe in them, and uh, I, I never saved fuel one time. I mean, I ran it as hard as I could. I had to save my tires more than anything, so uh, I don't know. I bet it's pretty close. If they say it's close, that means it's close, but, uh, you know, that's, that's what wins races. A great team like this, they can gamble, they can uh, make close calls like that. Great pit stops all day long. I mean, consistency was there, and uh, this, this is a great day. We're real real proud of, uh, of everybody involved, and it's great to be in victory lane in Darlington, man. This is wonderful. And the 1995 Series champ gets his second win here in 1996. He won at Richmond. Now he wins at the track too tough to take. Bob? Take a look at the unofficial results. You yeah. will see that there were seven cars on the lead lap, and a lot of these standings changed just in the last couple of laps when several cars ran out of fuel. There we see Dale Jarrett back in 12th spot as we go back through the top 30. And finally, the remainder of the field as only about uh, nine cars uh, were out of competition when the checkered flag dropped. Well, Jeff Gordon now ninth in the points. We'll be back next week for more NASCAR Winston Cup racing at Bristol International Raceway in Tennessee. We take a look at the quest for the cup standings, remind you to stay tuned now for LPGA Golf coming up next from Phoenix, Arizona. For Jerry, Bill, John, Ned, and Benny, this is Bob Jenkins. So long, everyone now to Joel Myers.